for today, Kelly? A start is critical for Baylor. If they allow Texas to get off to a big start, this could be over with very quickly. Texas must prove that they're motivated to play well today because there isn't a lot of outside motivation. Mm -hmm. It has to come within. And then Baylor needs to do the little things right, particularly on the offensive side of the ball. They have shot themselves in the foot, Ron. They have to do a lot of those little things right today to score points. Of course, the head coach for the Texas Longhorns in his 10th year, 98 wins at UT, just 24 losses. Won the national title course in 2005 is Mac Brown. 17 consecutive winning seasons for Mac Brown. Second winning as coach in Texas history. He has done an outstanding job of getting Texas football where it belongs. Baylor won the toss. They deferred. Juan Cosby is back for Texas. And it's going to be Caleb Allen kicking it away. You talk about motivation for this Texas offense. We've got a sneaking suspicion that we'll see the no huddle early, maybe even some trick plays just to catch the UT offense's attention. Yeah, offensive coordinator Greg Davis wants to start fast today. Fast tempo and get points on the board early. This is going to be a semi-short kick at about the seven-yard line. Obaniah looks for the lane, gets over the 25, over the 30-yard line, and the 33-yard line, and that's where Texas will begin their first possession. Caleb Allen actually made the hit on the play. Texas offense has played well the last couple of games. Colt McCoy, the senior or sophomore from Tuscola, Texas, son of a high school football coach. Even when it was going bad, Kelly, he didn't even blink. I think he's a better leader this year. Yeah, no question. He's had to weather the storm early. Remember, they're putting in three or four offensive linemen up front. He took a beating early on. Kansas State, Oklahoma, he weathered that. He's become a better leader. And right now, that is really starting to emerge. You talk about they want to start fast, finish strong. That's the motto. Jamal Charles in the backfield with Colt McCoy. The fake looking, just dumps it off. Finley, Jermichael Finley, who had an outstanding game against the Oklahoma Sooners, picks up good yardage. And the skill position with Lima Sweet out for the year, we're going to see a lot of Jones, Cosby, and Jermichael Finley. And on the line, Hills at left tackle is going to be the most experienced. Center is Dallas Griffin. He's the only other senior. They've got six guys. They said all of them are great. All of them could start. Whoever practices the best this week gets to start. You may see even more than that, especially when the second team offense comes in, probably in the second quarter. Fresh set of downs for Texas. First and 10, ball at the 42-yard line. Charles, left side, great running room, close to midfield. Baylor defense, last three games, opponents have averaged about 44 points a contest. They've done a lot better on the line. Rhodes and Lamb are the top two tacklers on the DL. The linebackers, Moore and Pavelic, they are outstanding. They're all over the place. Stiggers is the rover. Secondary, keep an eye on this young man, Jordan Lake at free safety. Just a sophomore, he's a tackling machine. We saw him at a and we had 18 tackles. He is just a monster back there. Second down and three. Charles breaks over left side, gets a block from Shipley. Inside the 35-yard line, they'll mark him out at the 33. Pickup of 18 on the play. And Texas comes out in that zone read out of the shotgun with Colt McCoy, and they're running the football. Last week, they threw the ball 10 out of their first 11 plays, and we asked offensive coordinator Greg Davis about that, and he said it's just really a matter of how the defense plays us. We're willing to do whatever's necessary, and right now, that's smash-mouth football. Now they go the open set of the backfield, something they've worked on. McCoy's got some time over the middle, has a receiver incomplete at the 20-yard line. Jordan Lake came up with the hit right as the ball was trying to be caught. That's that Jordan Lake we talked about from Houston Memorial High School. And that's the big tight end we talked about, Jermichael Finley. He roams the middle of that field, which you need against it. a defense in Baylor that plays a lot of cover two shell. And Jordan Lake is one of those safeties that has to come off the hash and pay attention to fin Finley, a tight end with wide receiver talent. Second down and 10. McCoy out in the flat, pass is caught inside the 30 down to the 27-yard line. Fon Cosby out of Mark, Texas, has a lot of relatives here today. This is a young man that spent four years with the California Angels in minor league baseball. He has got the firmest handshake of the team, but the softest hands, Kelly. Yeah, you have to have strong hands as a wide receiver, but soft hands to invite that ball in. You don't want to beat it up. 
Third down and five. The Longhorns 47% on the year. McCoy, pass incomplete. Not sure what happened there. It was well off the mark. Pass was intended for Finley. Nick Moore was on the coverage. Well, Ron, I'll tell you what happened is Finley was going inside. And the quarterback, Colt McCoy, saw the safety coming down. And a quarterback's natural tendency is to throw away from the coverage guy. Finley, as the young receiver, he carried into that cover guy. You want to set out. You don't run to get covered. Now the Longhorns are going to attempt the field goal. Jordan Shipley will be the holder. It's going to be a fake. Shipley looking. He's going into the end zone. No penalty flag. Incomplete. There comes the flag late. Intended receiver was Finley. It looked like they were doing a little hand-to-hand -hand combat there. And you're looking at Dwayne Crawford, number one on the screen, and he was the defender that was on coverage. The question, I think, that's being asked right here is whether the ball was catchable yeah. or not. I think you're exactly right. We'll take a look at it again. Let the men in stripes talk about it. Our referee is Cleet Blakeman today. Here it is. And the ball was air milled. There's a pretty stiff win, and that ball finished five yards no out of bounds. The ball was uncatchable. Yeah. First down. Great call. And a lot of times, Ron, when the officials have time to get together, mm -hmm. they generally get it right, and I believe they got it exactly right on this play. Yeah, this ball ends up, watch where it hits. I mean, that would have taken, Finley's a big receiver at 6'5", but not that big. That <laughs> ball that was air milled five yards out of bounds. So the Baylor defense gets a break. Talking to Larry Hofer, their defensive coordinator, he said, listen, don't look at the stats. Our guys have been playing well. We're playing a lot better than the numbers indicate. So Baylor's offense, which has struggled, you can see Michael Matchin, the quarterback, the senior out of Mobile, Alabama. They call him Big Bird. Keeping it simple on the first place from the line of scrimmage. Gets up close to the 28-yard line. Talk about the Texas offense wanting to start fast. Baylor offense has not started fast this year. The skill position, Whitaker leads in receiving. But watch David Geddes, a wide receiver, has really kicked it up a notch the last couple of games. The line has done a lot better job this year than last year. Chad Smith at the left guard spot. He's the only senior on that line. Pick up a two on the play, second down and eight. Look for Texas to try to confuse Matchin with changing up defenses. From the shotgun, five-man rush. Matchin throws this duck up in the air, it's quacking. Gettys goes high and makes the catch. Ron, you just got been talking about Gettys, and he's that speed guy that has to learn how to catch the football. And what they've been talking to him about in practice is go attack the ball. Don't worry about all this fundamental stuff. When you see the ball, attack the ball. And that's exactly what he does at the end of that play. He's their big play guy. This offense isn't mature enough to drive the ball to get points. They need to have explosive plays. There's one. You said they needed to start quick. That was not the prettiest pass in the world, but it got the job done courtesy of Mr. Geddes. So they are in Longhorn territory. At the 28-yard line, Matchin looking for the quick look in the Geddes. He had it, dropped it. Nice defensive play by Brandon Foster. Let's take a look at this Texas defense, third best in the Big 12. Houston, Ocam, Loki, Arakpul, they are fast and physical on that line. The linebackers, they'll rotate six guys in from that linebacker spot. And the secondary, we just saw one of the cornerbacks, Foster, his high school teammates, Ryan Palmer. Griffin and Jackson will be the safeties. Second down and 10 for the Bears. They like to dink and dunk from this, this position in the field. Nothing doing. Great job on Whitaker by that Texas defense. But if Scott Daring was right there to lead the charge. Had a bunch of people. Ryan Arakpo also on the penetration. Run. Michael Matchin really isn't the best athlete out of the quarterbacks that have an opportunity to play in this system here at Baylor. But he is the prototype drop back passer, but what he's going to have to prove today, 
out of that shotgun is that he wants to run the football out of that zone read that we just saw right there. Texas is not going to respect it unless he chooses to keep it around the end of time or two. Chris Burke, the true freshman, goes wide to the right. Akers in the slot. Whitaker joins Matchin in the backfield. Loss of six on that last play. Matchin to get his thrown behind him. Penalty flag is thrown by the linesman at the 30-yard line. Geddes had a nice break on that ball. Once again, you know, that's one of those timing patterns, isn't it, quarterback Kelly? Be, and, and, you know, with three quarterbacks, we'll listen Holding on the offense, number 71. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. That's part of the problem when you're trying to find a quarterback on Monday and Tuesday, yeah. and they're not getting the reps and get that timing down. Yeah, it's not a good sign when you're choosing between one of three, which usually means you don't really have the one you want. And matching. The further the ball goes down the field, the more impeccable the timing has to be. And that is what is not present with this Baylor Bear offense currently. Well, Caleb Allen's going to come in and attempt the field goal. Tyler Beatty, another quarterback, is going to be the holder. It'll be a 50-yarder. He hit his career-long 46-yarder versus Texas A&M. Good snap, good hold, kicking with the wind. Does it have enough? No, wide right. So the long pass to Geddes goes for naught. Baylor comes up empty-handed. You've got to take advantage of every break you get against this. Came up short on their first possession. This is their second possession of the ball game from their own 33-yard line. Jamal Charles joins McCoy in the backfield. Out of the flat, looking for a block. He gets it. Up to about the 40-yard line, Paul Cosby. Lewis Johnson, it seems like part of Caleb Allen's problem there on the field goal may be the wind. Is that true? Without question, and it was a problem in warm-ups. I watched Allen uh, kick four final field goals in his warm-up. He missed three of the four wide right. And I have to tell you, I'm not sure what it's like up there, but down here on the field, the wind is swirling like crazy. Take a look at the fans. No matter where you look, north, east, south, or west, a brisk wind up high where you are and very stiff and swirling around down here. I'm going to ask Kelly here in a second how that affects a quarterback. And right now, Cole McCoy going right into the wind. They're going to try to keep it on the ground. Bouncing off tackles close to the first down. Jamal Charles, how does that affect the quarterback? Because he's Cole McCoy right now going into a pretty stiff wind. Yeah, run. going into the wind, you have to throw a nice tight ball and kind of minimize the surface area exposed to that wind so you can cut through it or the wind knocks it to the ground. And what we saw to match it going with the wind, especially deep balls tend to sail. You have to drive that ball in there in a, in a pass that typically you would use a little finesse. Not today. you got to drive it home. Third down and one. McGee Obanaya in the eye formation. McGee got the first down up over the 45-yard line. Joe Pavelic, the sophomore from Smithson Valley High School in Spring Branch, Texas, outside of San Antonio. Derek Loki is the one who really came up with a block. They took him off defense, and they put him on the offense. What you're seeing right now out of Texas is wanting to run the football because of what Baylor is doing defensively. Mm -hmm. It's really a 4-3 defense. They're playing fairly soft. I think they would rather have Texas prove that they can march the ball to get points versus the big plays of last week. McCoy's pass dropped. 45 yard line. Pass was intended for Cosby. Looked like Alton Weidman got a hand on it. The senior from Lindale, Texas. That ball looked like it was on the mark though, didn't it? Yeah, it did, but it was very good coverage. And I, I think that's what Baylor is settling into right now. They're, they're going to try to get pressure with four down linemen. And typically, Baylor actually plays a 3-3-5 three, three, defense, but they have an extra down lineman in the game. Pressure with four and cover with seven. Baylor shows blitz. They back off. They run that little slip screen. Nate Jones. Takes a big hit as he gets inside the 50 down to the 49-yard line. Pavelic, his third tackle already in the ballgame. Nate Jones, a senior from Texarkana, Texas. There's Joe Pavelic. This is this Pavelic kid yeah. and was just absolutely outstanding last season. Just as a, a redshirt freshman, he makes plays inside and out. Third down and four. Empty backfield, McCoy looking right. The slam, incomplete. Pass intended for Billy Pittman. 
Baylor playing some pretty stout defense. Josh Bell, this time the senior cornerback out of Skyline High School in Dallas with a good day. Yeah, Bell on Pittman, the quick slant out of the empty backfield, and the ball is slightly behind him. And that's the win factor once again. The quarterbacks have to be very sharp today because the wind is blowing hard enough to affect that ball. That one drifted a little bit on Colt McCoy and it ended up on the back shoulder right in the mouth of the defender, Josh Bell. Well, Justin Moore, the senior out of Houston, Texas, standing about the 38-yard line. Chris Burke for Baylor back at the 12. They're making a little change on their punt return team. Slanting it towards the out-of-bounds line. Oh, Texas had a shot at it, couldn't get the hands on it. So Baylor will take over first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. 9.07 to play in quarter number one. We're scoreless. Scoreless? Glad you're with us today. First and 10, their own 20 yard line for the Baylor Bears, matching one of three. Throwing the football, had the long pass to get it. His first completion is a Baylor Bear. This time into the flat. Paul passes not thrown well, intended for Justin Akers. Ron, you could see on that pass, it was coming right to us on the sideline. We had a great angle, and that ball was blown upfield. That's the adjustment that you have to make. Wind is a factor today in the kicking game and the passing game. Make no mistake about it. Second down and 10. Jay Finley, redshirt freshman from Corsicana, Texas, with matching in the backfield. Texas changing up their defense. Here comes the blitz. Baylor picks it up, pass clock. Up at the 24-yard line. Chris Burke, the true freshman. Let's take a look at our Tom Tom team travel log. 96, this is the 97th meeting. Texas is 170, lost only 22. We had four ties in this game. Last nine wins in a row by Texas. They've done it by an average of 40 points. They really dominate this series. Ouch. Baylor trying to break that. Yes, ouch, big time ouch. Third down and six for the Bears. Texas has held Baylor scoreless the last 10 quarters in the last couple of meetings between these two. Blitz comes, Baylor picks it up, dropped. This is a team that had 10 drops in that Texas A&M game. They've had a couple today, and we have a player down. Well, the way you just described it, Texas comes with the blitz, Baylor picks it up. That's great up to that point, but then it's dropped. That's what Baylor hasn't done well. That's one of the little things. Catching the ball in the game of football is a little thing. You have to do the little things right in order to drive the ball and get points on the board. Well, they're going to be forced to kick it away. With the win, Texas brings a ton. Nice high spiraling kick. And they're just going to let it roll inside the 30-yard line. That'll be a 47-yard punt. Nice job. Thursday again. Now, sometimes we might see Childs and Colt McCoy in the lineup at the same time. Childs, the true freshman out of Dallas, Texas. And Ron, what you're probably going to see is more of the zone read with the possibility of Childs keeping the ball a great deal. Which they did a lot with Vince Young, obviously. Nothing doing. Good job stretching out the play. Jamal Charles just running out of room. And this is something you have to go back, and a lot of people have talked about it as far as John Childs. Last year, obviously, when Colt McCoy got hurt in the Kansas State game, and he never really was the same until, until really the Alamo Bowl. They want to get this young man some playing time because they think he has an enormous amount of ability. Yeah, he has a, a lot of ability, and make no mistake about it, there's no quarterback controversy in Austin. Oh, no, no. Colt McCoy is that, that bull that's going to lead the, the cattle drive, no question about it, but you always need a competent backup. Here's the option, and he keeps it. He was the leading rusher against Iowa State. Gets up to the 31-yard line. Pick up of two on the play. Leon Freeman coming up to make the stop. Welcome to Floyd Casey Stadium in Baylor, Texas. As we've got the Longhorns and the Bears, along with Kelly Stoffer and Lewis Johnson. I'm Ron Thulin. Glad you're with us today. And it's windy in Waco today, isn't oh, it? Oh, it is. There you can see the slow starts this season by Texas. And Baylor's defense has been stout in the first quarter. He tucks it down up over the 35-yard line. He'll be close to the first down. Needed to get to the 38-yard line. Let's see where they mark it. They're marking it 
just past the 38. Vincent Rhodes coming up from that defensive tackle spot to make a stop. And it is a first down. This is the running ability of Childs. Yeah, this is what Childs gives that Colt McCoy doesn't give to this extent. But watch the reach right at the very end. Very good play. Heads up to know exactly what you need. But the first time that Childs was in a passing situation, Baylor brought the house. This time, Vondrell McGee. No, take that back. John Childs keeps it. You know, people are saying, oh, John Childs, isn't he like Vince Young? No, let me tell you something. Vince Young was a freak. This, <laughs> yeah. this guy, he's 6'2", yeah, 205. Childs is good, but Vince yeah. Young, I'm sorry, Vince. I know you're watching. By the way, I hope we get, you get better. Can't compare this young man to Vince Young yeah. yet. Yeah, that's not Please fair. Don't do there that. really isn't another quarterback right now probably on the, on the planet that's uh, to that caliber, so it's not fair. And he just brings a different skill set than Colt McCoy, and it's a good change of pace at that position. Second down and eight. This time McGee's got it. Trying to slip to the outside over the 43-yard line. Joe Pavelic just doing a nice job trying to take the legs from underneath Andre McGee. Already five tackles in this ball game for Pavelic. And Pavelic and Jordan Lake are going to have to have enormous days today. They're going to have to feel quickly and tackle extremely well to have a chance to win this game. Third down and five. Texas almost caught Baylor trying to change defensively. Childs looking for the option. Keeps it. Got the first down close to the 50-yard line. And Pavelic is that guy that actually has the quarterback on the option. It's a tough assignment. Watch him skate along the side, has to avoid the blocker that's throwing at his knees, and then still gets outside. That's the assignment. And remember, Childs can get there in a hurry. It's a speed option. There really isn't a read until he gets around the edge. So Pavelic has to be in a hurry. Pickup of seven on the play. McGee scoots through the middle, breaks over the 35, down to the 31-yard line. Crawford finally brings him down. Pickup of 18 on the play for McGee. And watch Pavelic this time. He goes up field and checks the quarterback, runs right by the runner right there, number 41. And that's what leaves that lane open. Pavelic has to be aware of where, has to be aware of wherever John Childs goes. And McGee's going to stay in the lineup, giving this second team offense a little work. They call him the storm. Penalty flag, hang on. I think the Texas called the timeout. They did on the far side of the football field. Timeout, Texas. That'll be there. Texas on the run. Baylor has allowed only two touchdowns in the first quarter this year. Right now, first and 10 balls on the 32-yard line. Texas going with their second team offense on this drive. McGee again, left side, breaks a couple of tackles. He crosses the 25 down to about the 23-yard line. So the richer freshman out of Longview, Texas, they call explosive. Getting a lot of playing time today. You know what's interesting is Baylor came into this game really Defensive-wise, wanting to defend the pass. So I think Childs brings a little better option in that running game that's working well on this drive. Nothing doing this time. The Baylor defense stands strong on Childs. Leon Freeman from Vero Beach, Florida, with his first tackle of the night. Or second, check that, second tackle. What a defense wants to do, Ron, when an offense is driving the ball, the defensive coordinator immediately starts to think pressure because I have to create a negative play. And that's what the situation was right there. And Leon Freeman is at defensive end. They ran a stunt, and he came completely free up inside. Third down and seven after the loss of four. 3.45 to play. Child's yet to throw a pass. This is his first, and it's going to be short hop at the 20-yard line, intended for Brandon Collins, the true freshman out of Brenham, Texas. There you see the, the immaturity in, in the other phase of the game. Childs has ran the offense well and used his feet well, but when he had to throw, it didn't look so good. And what he did on that play is a right-handed quarterback going to your left. You have to get square to the line of scrimmage to throw the football. And that time, his feet and his shoulders were facing 
directly to the Texas bench. Now Ryan Bailey is going to attempt a 46 yard field goal. His long is 52. He's three of four from this distance. Last time they tried the fake. Shipley takes the snap, driving kick. With against the win, and he's got it. Nice job by Ryan Bailey out of Austin, Texas. 11 of 13 on the year, field goal wise. On the ground on that drive, but Baylor came up with a negative play in the red zone, keeps him out of the end zone touchdown wise, and forces the field goal attempt. Nice job by Bailey, gets him on the board, 3-0. We've got just over three and a half to play here in quarter number one. David Geddes, B.J. McElroy, back and the ball blows off. David Geddes is just outstanding back there in sprinter speed, part of the Baylor track team. 97-yard return versus Kansas. There he is. First kickoff return for a touchdown for Baylor since 2005. And just watching him work out yesterday, this young man's exciting. Starting to come into his own. We're going to keep it a little bit short. Somebody get it. Geddes has got it. Looking for some running room, a bunch of white jerseys. Up to the 23. You know, Rod, kickers are kind of funny in some ways. And watch this little celebration. They actually had to work on that. You know, that's a scary thing. <laughs> they actually had to plan that out and maybe practice it a time or two. And kickers have a lot of time on their hands, and that's a good example of it. Well, let's, let's hope he's not like Martin Gramatica yeah, blows exactly. an ACL trying to exactly. celebrate. Talk about having to work on it. Well, the Baylor offense, they look for about nine yards per completion, five yards of carry. Haven't gotten that today. Matchin still in a quarterback with Finley. He has the one long completion. This time, the short pass up to the 34-yard line. That'll be close to a first down. Justin Akers out of Deer Park, Texas. You know, we asked a couple questions to offensive coordinator Lee Hayes yesterday, and he jumped right up on the board and just started drawing things up for us with I I thought was outstanding and your eyes kind of glassed over. I had to kind of oh, get man. you back into it a little bit, but what he was showing is that it's a system here. This offense mm -hmm. is a system and you put a quarterback in and he has to run the system and that's what Matchin has to do today. This time they try a little ground game. That has not been successful this year. Texas defense just stacking up uh, Jay Finley. They're talking more about that system. We see it in, at Texas Tech, and we see what happens when Mike Leach has a senior running that offense, an experienced quarterback with receivers that are on the same page. I mean, the sky is the limit, but the quarterback and receivers have to be on the same page, and that's really frustrating to Lee Hayes when you're in midweek and still trying to decide who's mm -hmm. going to be on the field. Lee Hayes, the ex-Marine, was at West Texas A&M. One of those guys that have to get them talking and you're ready to go out and play. Three wide receivers to the right. Instead, they try the ground game. Up, oh, ball's loose, and I think Texas got it. Let's take a look at it again. Marcus Griffin, they're celebrating for good reason. And this is part of the two. They, Baylor doesn't run much, but they run, try to be effective. When did the ball come out is going to be the question, and it's being reviewed as every play is reviewed, but whether they have to stop play and take a further look will be the question right here, and well, they're I believe buzzed. they're going yeah, to. they're getting buzzed right now. Well, Mac likes it. He thought it was a fumble. Dwayne Aquina thought it was a fumble. And, and Coach Brown talks about the way we win, win games is win the turnover takeaway battle and then win the explosive play battle. <clears throat> And I think that ball was coming loose before the running back was down. Yeah, well, they had a drought of 12 consecutive quarters without forcing a turnover. They broke that at Iowa State, forcing three turnovers. That's been a staple. They're four and six under Mac Brown when they don't force a turnover in two of those games for this yeah. year. And Ron, uh, another thing, remember when we are is kind of the story of the Baylor offense this year. Here's the uh, review. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Down. Well, no fumble. 
They're saying it was not a fumble, so it's third down and six. I thought it was clear. Yeah. Oh, well, that's why we have reviews. Indisputable evidence is needed to reverse what's on the field, so it's obviously always very important what is called initially by the officials. I was going to say, this is kind of typical Baylor offense this year. They get going and shoot themselves in the foot. Now Whitaker back in. Texas showing the blitz. They back off. They only bring two. They throw it out of the flat. Pass is complete. Close to the first down to Brandon Whitaker, who's also their leading receiver. I like what Texas is doing defensively. Cover two, watch the corner roll up right there, and then if there's a threat in the flat, he's the one that has to get up there and do, and break on the ball, and Brandon Foster does a nice job, but what it also, it's, it makes it necessary for the offense to drive the mm -hmm. football and force this inexperienced quarterback to make good decisions because a cover two defense doesn't give up big plays very often. And now we have Derek Epperson, a true freshman, Back to kick it away, had his career-long 56-yarder, and we've got a penalty. It's only fourth down in a couple. All start on the offense, number eight. We'll back a little Five bit. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. It was interesting, too, the way Texas decided just to back off two guys and only rush two guys on that last play. Well, Switching defensive up. coordinator Akina told us yesterday that that's one thing that's changed between this year and last year. Last year they were much more aggressive in past situations, putting a lot of pressure on their secondary. They said this year they're less aggressive in those pass downs, and that was a good example of it. Pavelic's the up man for Baylor. Texas with a lot on the line. Here they come. Evers gets it off, and it's a boomer. Cosby singles the fair catch, and he's got it at the 16-yard line. 46 yards on the ball record the way it is right now the way they're struggling if we can pull together Maybe we can knock off Texas now Lewis. I don't know about you, but I heard the engine right in there <laughs> Well, the let, hey, let me the, the engine was running and I was told that they had to do that to make sure that they could apply the brakes If there was a problem, oh, okay. but, but no one was on the accelerator as far okay. as I was told okay. <laughs> Not a bad idea to have the brake system working. That yeah, thing. exactly it starts rolling downhill You never know what's gonna happen. Well, it's been a frustrating time as head coach for guy Morris here at Baylor you know, it looked like they were going to try to get over the hump a couple of years ago, and then last year they dropped down to three and five in conference play, sixth place. We're going to be running out of time here in quarter number one. And you'd like to see him succeed here. He needs a little help, though, from the administration and the alumni on this one. That's the end of the first quarter, but the Baylor defense does a nice job. Welcome back to Waco, Texas. The Texas Longhorns only with a field goal that opening 15 minutes, and they lead the Baylor Bears 3-0, along with Kelly Stauffer, Lewis Johnson, Ron Thulin with you today on this wonderful Saturday in Waco, Texas, where the Longhorns take over. And we have a penalty flag prior to it. Uh, you know, that, that'll give a coach a gray hair. Yeah. You come out of this minute and a half, two-minute timeout, and you have a false start. Number 16, five-yard penalty, still second down. Yeah, Drew Michael Finley, the Young tight end just couldn't quite help himself, but you're right. The pre-snap penalties are the worst kind. Oh, yeah. Penalties in the red zone and then penalties before anything happens are tough to take for a head coach. That's Texas's first penalty of the afternoon. Paul McCoy back it up. Looks to put it up over the middle. Has a man wide open. Caught at the 25-yard line up to the 30. Finley, his second reception. Here's a guy that came, to high, came out of high school as a wide receiver, got David Thomas's, the former Texas tight end's number, and he is just an incredibly tough cover. Yeah, and he roams the middle of the field, and that's certainly the way to make up for a, a fault start on the play before, but that's who Larry Hofer said that he was worried about. Mm -hmm. The big tight end roaming the middle creates an instant bad matchup for Baylor. No receptions last week versus Iowa State. McCoy now, this is where he's been dangerous the last couple of games. Lofts it up into the sun. Intercepted Baylor. Brandon Stiggers comes down with it, his second of the year. Hey Ron, you hit it on the head. Colt McCoy has been torching people when he gets out of the pocket and finds receivers deep. He tries to do it right here to Finley, and the ball floats on him just a little bit. And Stiggers makes a nice play. The linebacker chasing the tight end. 
mean, that is a spectacular play. Both go up. The Stiggers is only six feet tall. And the big tight end Finley, 6'5", but Stiggers wanted that ball worse than Finley did. Well, last week versus Kansas was the first time this Baylor defense did not force a turnover this year. So they keep that string going. Now Texas comes out on the blitz. Matching looks for the screen. He's got it. Running room over to 50. Brandon Whitaker, ball is down. They'll mark him at about the 47-yard line. And we take a look at our leaders for Baylor through that first 15 minutes of play. Whoa, is he okay? We've got Baylor player down. It looks like Brandon Whitaker is hurt. He tried to run as we look at the leaders. He tried to get up, and he fell right to the ground. Yeah, on that screen, he took mm. a serious pop at the other end, and he tried to get up, and... And it's kind of like the boxer in the gets knocked down in the corner and staggers out. His trainers were the first ones to him when they saw him hit, but he did walk off on his own power. So his family and friends up there in Edmond outside of Oklahoma City. Just we'll give you an update when we can. Matching showing some poise now on first and ten. Pass is complete. They'll mark it down to the 43-yard line to David Geddes. And I think I want to go back, though, to that screen pass. Texas shows the blitz. Did we see a little poise by Matching? Yeah, you saw a little poise by Matchin and the benefit of great anticipation and play calling by Lee Hayes. After the turnover, Texas wanted to be aggressive and not give Baylor any momentum, so they came after him. Six guys came after Matchin and he dumped it over top to the screen. Perfect play call. A little chess match there. Fenty and Geddes now wide to the left. Texas again showing blitz. Here they come from the right side. Pass tipped up in the air and it'll be intercepted by the Longhorns. Jared Norton, the sophomore from Rowlett, Texas. You know, once again, Ron, we see the miscommunication between quarterback and receiver. Geddes needs to set down outside. He's the outside receiver. He comes inside. The receiver breaks inside. The quarterback is taught to throw the ball away from the defender that's driving on the ball, but Geddes brought that a little bit too far inside initially, and the quarterback, Matchin, led him into that defender as well. That's Matchin's second interception thrown. His first was against AM on a fake punt. So the Longhorns take over on their own 36-yard line. First and 10. They lead it 3 nothing. Going with the ground game with Jamal Charles, leading rusher the last couple of years, number two in the conference in rushing. Going back to what you said about a little while ago, Texas's Drake Davis said, listen, we're, we're not worried about how much we run as much as the fans are. We're going to take what the defense gives us. Yeah, at the end of the day, they want to be balanced and not necessarily equal pass to equal run, but balance means in the, in the mixed down situations, you generally are balanced. Mm -hmm. Or in passing downs, you're more balanced. And right now, Texas is willing to just grind it out. Oh boy, the quick toss out to the outside. Billy Pittman got the first down right at midfield. Well, let's take a look at our Kawasaki Conference leaders as far as passing and Graham Harrell and company with Michael Crabtree, the true freshman. They are just flat out good out there in Lubbock. Yeah, this mark right here kind of skews the <laughs> yeah. skews the whole list, but very dynamic offenses here in the in the Big 12. They do a lot of things right. Texas Tech wants to throw it most of the time. A lot of those other people are very balanced. McCoy reads the blitz, got the circus catch complete. Juan Cosby, we talked about the soft hands we saw it there. Cosby, Cosby is third catch, Kelly. On the blitz outlet, a good job by both recognizing and this was what Baylor has to learn from the quarterback sees it the receiver has to see the same thing and has to be willing with courage to go up and get the football well, he showed that 26 straight games he's caught a pass and the boy keeps it just ducks his head will be short of the first down by a couple Nick Moore from that linebacker spot out of Arlington Texas Leonard actually in Georgia Tech's freshman year. We're at Floyd Casey Stadium. Blue skies, hot sun, along with Kelly Stoffer and Lewis Johnson. I'm Ron Poolman, 3 0 Texas with a field goal. And Baylor, or Texas has done a great job on the year, almost 
47 percent on third down situations because they do this a lot they're in third and short a great deal of the time just a little over a yard Baylor looked like they jumped off size and McGee will get the first down with a couple to spare now they're saying it's a fumble let's see if the officials say it was down Baylor said they got it well the officials say nope he was down a lot of, I'll tell you what, a lot of people coughing the ball up today. I'm not sure if it was down as much as kind of forward momentum had stopped and the official was already coming in to mark, mark the ball. Yeah, I think it was a penalty against Baylor anyway. Offsides on the defense, number 97. Five-yard penalty is enough for a first down. Well, Guy Morris has seen this before from his team. Looks like they come up with a good play and Got a penalty or something that happens. And what he's seen out of his team is an offense not taking advantage of mm -hmm. a short field, which was the interception, and the defense getting back on the field too early and having to play uphill a great deal. Hitman wide right, Cosby to the left. Baylor brings five. Polk reads it, dumps it off to the tight end, Finley again. What a hit as he's upended. But he gets inside the 30 down to the 28 yard line. Finley, three catches today. Bell and Moore help with the acrobatics of Finley. And what you see out of Texas right now is that offense is expanding. The zone read, and now it's the boot, the quick dump to the tight end. But how about an athletic 6'5", 240-pound tight end, and growing, by the way, and doing stuff like that. He's a special player. Keep an eye on him in the next couple of years in Austin. Mm -hmm. Third down and just a yard. Or second down and a yard. Boy, a little play action, looking down the middle, going to scramble this time. Chase from behind, knocked out of bounds. It'll be short of the first down. Jason Lamb doing a nice job. Let's check back down. I think they need to hide his helmet and leave him on the bench. Eric Lundy from the defense back in. Third down and short. Tripped up right at the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be close. McGee tried to stretch over. Needed to get just at about inside, just a shade inside the 27 yard line. They're marking it right at the 27. They're saying it is a first down. And Ron, we saw in the play before when Colt McCoy on second and one, play action, didn't have anything downfield, makes a great decision, runs out of bounds, but it leaves his team in third and one. That's mm -hmm. a, the situation you want to be in anyway. That's exactly the thing that they're getting out of Colt McCoy now. Great leadership, great decision making. How about that? Baylor only a single yard. They have only one game they've rushed over 100 yards this year. That was Buffalo. Fresh set of downs. Five minutes gone by here in the second. Charles in the backfield. McCoy avoids the rush. Still avoiding it. Stay on his feet. Leans inside the 20 as he takes a wallet down at the 19 yard line by Brandon Spiggers. You know, the kid, the Teammates on, a, on Texas kid McCoy about his running ability. In fact, sometimes he'll come in and he'll say, hey, are you Vince Young? Are you Vince Young? <laughs> he looked like it on that play. Not quite as tall, but nothing downfield. And then he makes once again a quarterback's number one job is to make good decisions. And typically that means keep your offense ahead and down a distance by limiting negative plays, and that's what Colt McCoy did on that point. Second down and two, pick up of eight for McCoy. Little delay to Charles. He's got some daylight, skips inside the 10-yard line. They'll mark him out at about the six and a half, seven. Pick up of 13 on the play for Charles. We've entered the Farmers Insurance Red Zone. Let's see how Texas has done this year. 24-30, they have scored 18 touchdowns. Do you like that 80%? Yeah, I like TDs? the 80% and 65, 67% TDs. I like that. Yeah, that's that's right up there doing what you're supposed to do in the red zone. Good play calling by Greg Davis has the Baylor defense on their heels, over 100 yards rushing. Charles to the right side, gets inside the five, down to the two. Submarining him again was Joe Pavelic. Pavelic again, 
Again, he's got six <laughs> tackles, seven tackles already today. Yeah, and that's that's the good news. The bad news is he's out there in a position to get a lot of tackles because Baylor's defense is on the field a great deal, not unlike the rest of the year so far, and that's the problem with Baylor right now. Their defense plays pretty well, but they get worn down as the game carries on. And Texas is leading in time of possession, something Baylor felt in that A&M game. Second down, goal to go from the three-yard line. Charles, Baylor stands him up. Second effort, third effort. Does not get in. First hit again by Joe Pavelic. Connor Redfern coming over to help out a little bit. The senior out of Mount Pleasant, Texas, in East Texas. You can see Texas is trying to get around the edge, pulling a couple offensive linemen, trying to outman Baylor at the point of attack. But Baylor doesn't lack effort. Make no mistake about that. Pavelic is really just epitomizes, and Jordan Lake epitomized the way they play on that side of the ball. 12th play of the drive. Third down and goal from the two. McCoy, wide open. Complete, intended for Peter Allman, the tight end. When the defense is selling out this close into the end zone, play action pass is almost to give me, and it, give me, and it should have been right here. Mm. Quarterback Colt McCoy just needs to put it on Allman, and he lets it high and right, and he was begging for another opportunity to stay in the game and try to get this thing in the end zone. Fourth down and goal from the one-yard line. Eric Loki back in on offense for Texas. Helping out the blocking. On the option. Taken away by Baylor! Inside the 40 is Brandon Stiggers penalty flag. It'll be a face mask. Stiggers with an interception. Then an incredible play. What a day for Stiggers. Texas elects to go for it on four down, and they try to get outside and run the load option with the back leading. And McCoy makes a good decision, pitches it, but it's just behind him. And McGee can't come up with it. Stiggers is right there to take advantage of it. This is going to be 15 extra yards because of the face mask at the end. The question now becomes, can Baylor's offense do anything with the second great opportunity? 15 yards to the end of the run. First down. McGee is the one who got the face mask. Stiggers had the interception earlier, picked up that fumble, took it back 60 plus yards. And now Baylor will have it, first and 10, inside the 20. And I said it was Texas running the load option, and actually they only had one back in, and they pulled an offensive lineman to lead. The play was there. The pitch just needed to be a little bit better, and the running back needed to secure the football. Now well, let's see if Mashing and company can take advantage of this. Texas jumping around on defense. They bring five. Matching the little dump off. Pass complete. Wide open, touchdown, Baylor's Thomas White. <laughs> Thomas White with the touchdown, his second touchdown of the year, Matchin's first touchdown pass of the season. And we've got a Baylor player, player down. Once again, Ron, very good anticipation by Lee Hayes in his matching with the touchdown pass to White. Baylor is taking the lead, 7-12 to play in the opening half. Matching showing some poise today, and they'll try the extra point. By the way, Chad Smith was the player down. He came off the field under his own power, seems to be okay. Balls down, kicked up and away, and it is good. Thomas White, who had six receptions versus Texas last year, comes up in receptions, or I should say, uh, first reception of the year. He's mainly been uh, kind of a rushing wide receiver, the junior out of Plano West High School in Plano, Texas. Had a great game last year against UT. His Baylor got whacked pretty good, but he stood out. And now the Bears, you can see, 
One play, 17 yards, took him six seconds. Six seconds to go 17 yards. No. <laughs> but the big thing is Baylor getting points off the of turnovers. And this is a short pooch kick. Fair catch is going to be called at the 35 yard line. Peter Ullman not going to down on the sidelines for this ball game. Now Jamal Charles is back in the backfield after McGee had the fumble at the one yard line. McCoy flushed out of the pocket, tucks it, runs, and then takes a couple of big hits, but he's got the first down up over the 45 to the 48 yard line. Let's talk about the alternating backs here, Charles and McGee. We saw McGee obviously cough the ball up. But don't you want to get your main guy kind of a little rhythm going in being in Jamal Charles? Not only a rhythm going, but when he has been the ball carrier all the way on that drive and you're in the deep inside the red zone, really inside the five, you need your workhorse to be the guy that touches the ball. And that wasn't the mm -hmm. case on that play, and it cost Texas right there. Inside of seven minutes to play, opening half, McCoy. Pass, block, complete to the 40-yard line. Nate Jones. More reception this year than he had his entire career combined for the senior from Texarkana, Texas. And don't look now, but Colt McCoy is getting battered around today. Mm -hmm. Good job on the play action off the zone read. Good throw. Nate Jones comes across, runs the underneath route, and Colt McCoy finds him. But Colt McCoy took a shot. He's had to run the ball a few times, and Baylor is reacting up quick, quickly and putting a helmet on Colt McCoy every time. Pick up a 13 on the play, another first down. McCoy fakes the pass, keeps it again, tucks it, takes one hit, but he gets down to the 24-yard line. McCoy just showing yeoman's work today. Earl Patton, the true freshman, coming up from that linebacker spot to make the stop, but a pickup of 16 for McCoy. The quick pump outside, and then it's get up inside. It almost it looked like it was a design quarterback draw, mm -hmm. but the only thing that tells me it wasn't, he didn't have anyone leading him up inside. I think it was just great instincts. He's something he saw, and he just took, took advantage of it. First and 10. Charles, let's go this way. Running out of real estate, he's going to be tripped up. Still able to pick up a yard on the play. Jake Lamar, the junior out of Bedford, Texas, coming up to make the hit. And on a play like that, Ron, is where you see Baylor's improvement because they were very disciplined. Charles has the speed to go from one side and cut back to the other, and you have to be disciplined to close that back door and not allow the running back to cut it back. Second down, we'll call it nine. Five and a half to play. Baylor with five on the line, they bring four. McCoy's got time. Looking down the middle deep for Pater. Penalty flags thrown, pass is caught, but was he out of bounds? The officials are going to talk about it. Pass is incomplete, out of bounds. Nate Jones, the intended receiver. I believe they are going to call the pass interference, though, it seems like to me. Isn't that where the flag came down? Yeah, it came in the end zone. Yeah. And it was thrown right as Nate Jones was trying to make the cut on the And Nick backside. Moore was that linebacker trying to chase Jones down the middle of the field. Pass interference, defense, number 44. It's a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Yeah, Nick Moore is that linebacker on that play. He had to chase the slot receiver, Nate Jones, down the middle of the field. You can see Moore, 44, getting out of the middle, and then he doesn't turn around and find the ball, and as Nate Jones was starting to get around the corner, Nick Moore, you couldn't see on that re replay, you might hear, puts his hands out and grabs Nate Jones. That one knee looks down. Oh, like that looks pretty it. good to me. Yeah, look at that. Well, I'll tell you, they... They are reviewing to see if he was in bounds, but that knee was down. It looked, but did yeah. he have control of the football? That's, that's the question. That knee was down. Initially, it looked like he had control, but the official that was from this side, the field judge, was staring right at Nate Jones and whether he had possession. After got review, pressure. the ruling on the field is reversed. The player's left knee was down. It's secured. It is a touchdown. Give the touchdown. 
down to Nate Jones, his fourth of the year. Colt McCoy throwing the TD. It covers 23 yards. He's got 15 now in the season. A good job by offensive coordinator Greg Davis going back to what he almost had a couple of other times. But McCoy got pressure and wasn't able to throw the ball down the middle. That time he was able to get enough time. He found Nate Jones. 23 yards officially and the extra point on its way. Ryan Bailey, 39 consecutive PATs, perfect this year. And he remains that way. So Baylor took the lead at 7 to 3. The Texas marched down the field. Nate Jones with a touchdown from Colt McCoy, and Texas has regained the lead with 5.13 to play in the ball game. And that, and that drive was basically all Colt McCoy. Oh, yeah. Five plays, 66 yards. Did it with his feet early, and then a nice pass in the back of the end zone to Nate Jones. That's what a leader does. When your team needs something, the leader provides it. Let's see what Baylor can do the final five minutes of the half. Geddes and McElroy, this will be Geddes. At about the two-yard line, looks for some help. Nothing doing. Great coverage by that Texas kick team. Jockey Brown coming up to make the stop. Data Sam. Did you see that duck at the end? Yeah, yeah Sam's birthday present. We got the duck. Duck. There you go, Sam. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> that new ending with that duck running off the screen is all yours. Not good field position for Baylor. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. Finley. Already has had trouble holding down to the football, but he gets over the 15-yard line close to the first down. Ron, this is the first time we've seen Baylor in a backup situation offensively, and Matchin needs to be very careful down here. David Geddes didn't have a good return and put the offense in a bad situation. This is where Texas could open the door up wide. The good response by the offense and a mistake here by Baylor's offense could get Texas steamrolling. Matchin needs to be careful. You can see some of the scores already, possible upsets. How about Iowa State leading Oklahoma, Vanderbilt leading South Carolina. We'll have Scores throughout the game, bottom of your screen. Second down, very short. Finley. Tries to get to the first down. They're going to mark it, I think, right at the 20, just a shade short, but that'll be good enough to move the chains. 456 to play in the half. You know, if you have a way to keep track at home, keep track of Baylor's productivity on first down offensively mm -hmm. because that really sets the table this Baylor team isn't efficient enough to win being consistently down and down in distance and so they have to be productive on downs just like this so Lee Hayes was telling us they've got to get five six or seven on first down now they'll split the backfield up Texas only brings four, matching the long out. Pass complete, another first down on the run. Ernest Smith stepped out of bounds, they'll say, at the 34-yard line. Smith's first catch of the day, 14 on the reception. This is where you see matching strong arm, really the first time today. The far hash has to go clear across the field. That is a tremendous throw. That thing has to be on a rope, or the defender has time to get underneath that and take it back for a pick six. Boy, he had wide open daylight, too. He didn't put that little pinky out of bounds. First and 10, though, for Baylor, 427 in the half. Matching the quick look in, caught right at the 40-yard line again. It's Ernest Smith. Lewis football left, but that scored 135 to 43 in the Big 12. Again, that little slip screen. Still on his feet, close to the first down is Jay Finley. May have been just a little bit short, maybe a foot, foot and a half. Matchett says, my fault. I think he's saying he didn't yeah. give him the ball on time. Exactly. He didn't give him the ball on time, and it wasn't a very accurate pass. And a lot of times, this successful screens are all about timing because it's the timing, the throw to the whoever's going to get the ball, and then the offensive mm -hmm. lineman and the ball and the receiver have to have a good fit, and they did not have a good fit on that play. But back to what Lewis was saying, I think that's exactly where Baylor has to prove themselves today because Texas is going to respond. It's one thing to lead when the other team is just mm -hmm. giving you the game. But when Texas responds, Baylor offensively, what do you have now? That's a great point. 
This is basically the second year for this Baylor offense since Lee Hayes came over. And you talk to Mike Leeds or Al Mummy, anybody that runs this style of offense, they say it takes two or three years before the light bulb comes on. Yeah, and, and the two or three years, and every time you put in a new quarterback, it's like flunking a semester. So you have to go back in school. And that's what has happened here with Baylor. They lost Bell, graduated, and so they're trying to break in a new quarterback. You essentially take a giant step back that's right. and you have to break in a new quarterback in the system. Third down, very short. Baylor trying to hurry it up. Texas bunching the line of scrimmage. Got the first down with a little bit to spare. Showing confidence in that young running back, Jay yeah. Finley, and a nice job. There's a lot of times in short yardage situations where there is nothing at the point of attack. And watch the subtle move to his left. Nothing there, and it's just bouncing outside just a hair, because you just need a hair to pick up the first down. We've got a Texas player down on the field. Looks like Bobino is down. An outstanding middle linebacker out of Lamarck, Texas. Now we got to give props to that offensive line of Baylor. This yeah. is a line that gave up 36 sacks last year. They couldn't pass block, they couldn't run block. It's not they, good. Yeah, they really had a problem on it. And now they've only given up, with considering how many times they've thrown the football, only eight sacks, yeah. and they're doing much better blocking on the run. Yeah, when we saw this team a few weeks ago, they were still sorting out the combinations up front to know what linemen they want to play. And ideally, you want to have about eight guys that can, can rotate in there. Right now, mm -hmm. they realistically have about five. And Jason Smith, their best offensive lineman, is nicked up and isn't playing. So... You know, they're still thin up there, but the guys that are playing on the field right now, Ron, you're exactly right. They're getting it done. Well, Brandon Whitaker got banged up a little while ago. He's finally up off the bench. He is standing on the sideline, still has the towel around his head. But Finley's been getting to work in the backfield, and he'll stay there. 3.05 to play in the half. Clock is running. Texas, here they come. Matching reads it. Quick little out pass in the Longhorn territory to the 46 to David Geddes again. Geddes three receptions already this afternoon. And Geddes is that get it to guy. Every offense needs at least one guy where the you have a little box on the play calling sheet and it's get it to number four in this case. You have to design ways to get number four, mm -hmm. your playmaker, the ball. Well, they picked up five on the first down play. Gettis now wide to the left. Keegan Van to the near side. Try running it. Finley, nothing to it. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, picking up probably six or seven inches, it looks like. Good job defensively by Lamar Houston coming up from that power defensive end position. Derek Loki. Derek Loki up inside as well. Houston, good run support. And then Loki from that defensive tackle position. That's what makes Texas is so difficult to run on is the, the tackles, the guys inside. Ocam and Loki are so active, and you throw Roy Miller in there to really supplement both of them, and they do a nice job up inside. Third down and four. Baylor one of four this afternoon. Texas only rushes three. Matching pass caught. First down, Baylor, Justin Akers. Loki on the stop. That patience of Matchin again, though. Yeah, Matchin has a nice feel going right now. Good rhythm. Justin Akers, number 82, comes down, sits down in that void in, in that Texas zone, and Matchin puts it on him. That's the key. You not only have to find the right guy, you have to throw the ball accurately. This time he swings it out left side. A little bit of running room. Finally stepping out of bounds as Matchin showing that little swing pass. Justin Fenty, the sophomore out of Denton, Texas. Seems like he's keeping Texas' defense a little on their heels with the play calling, huh? Yeah, I think Lee Hayes is doing a great job. And I, it's, the question isn't whether Lee, ha Lee, Lee Hayes can call the plays. It's whether he has guys executing what he's calling. Right now, he does in his Baylor offense. Edison Fenty wide to the left. 128 to play. Second down and four here in the opening half. Texas blitzes again, matching. Looks and just throws it away. 
one thing about this offense, there's always an out. Now, Matt Brown saying, wait a minute, he wasn't outside the tackle and there was nobody there. Yeah, he was outside the hash, but he didn't, isn't necessarily outside the tackle box. I think it may have been a broken play. The line judge on the far side came over and wanted to check with the official, and you can see Matt Brown obviously does not agree with the call. There didn't look like any green jersey over there, and I'm not sure he was outside the tackle. When the quarterback drops straight back and throws the ball from where he is, he's not outside the tackle box. Keegan Van now brought in the backfield to help out with the blocking number 40, and Texas is bringing the house, matching, looking, throwing, caught at the 20-yard line. Another first down for Baylor. And again, it's Justin Akers, the tight end out of Deer Park, Texas. Justin Akers really has that, that body that he's half tight end, half wide receiver, which in this offense means he's in the slot a lot. He's a very good big bodied slot receiver, and Matchin's finding him on this drop. Two or more receptions, seven straight games now for Akers. They flip it out to the outside, nothing doing for Thomas White. He is stacked up, and he's actually going to lose a couple on the play. Ryan Palmer. Coming up from that quarterback spot to make the stop. 65 seconds to play. We've got a timeout. You can see a lot of the yellow jerseys there, the Baylor fans, but to be very honest with you, it's probably two to one Texas fans here against Baylor fans, and part of Baylor stands are flat out empty. They're not, not very many people, and uh, they weren't expecting a sellout today. But the Texas fans, they support their football team. Now Baylor second down and 12 after the loss of two. 105 to play in a half. We already have a penalty flag. Once again, we talked about it earlier, Kelly. These, this will give you even more gray here. Sideline interference. It's Texas. That's their first warning. Okay. Some of those Texas Longhorn people on the sidelines are still wanting to get up in that official's ear mm -hmm. because of that throwaway by matching just a, a play ago. Texas obviously didn't agree with it, and they still don't. Now Jay Finley just to the left of Matchin. Still second and 12. No yardage marked off. Texas brings four. Matchin is going to be hit and dropped back at the 32-yard line. Brian Arakpo and Lamar Houston. A little double team. Well, that's the ninth sack that Baylor's given up on the year as they call a quick timeout right here, but it's the first time Texas's pressure really got to match mm -hmm. it at all today. You can see the numbers on Lamar Houston. Well, you know, we have kind of been the upset network here versus. They have to be more efficient offensively if they have things like that in mind today. Third and 20. Matchin steps up in the pocket. He's going to be dropped again right at the line of scrimmage. This time it's Sam Acho. The true freshman out of St. Mark's High School in Dallas. And they're going to call a timeout again. Facing fourth down, and we'll call it 21. About alignment before that. Oh, yeah, that's that's easy for you to say. Mac I Brown. don't know that I choose either one of them at this point. In life. No, 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 I don't think so either. Mac Brown pleading his case. And, you know, I've seen Mac Brown in tough situations over the last uh, oh, a lot of years, since he's been at Texas, last 10 years, especially last year, last couple years, Oklahoma State, for instance, three and two years ago, never loses it on the sideline. He says that his players are watching him. Close games like this, he's keeping his cool. Fourth down, we'll call it 20. They're going for it. Matching, straight drop, over the middle, has a man, pass, incomplete. Almost intercepted by Texas, intended for Akers again. Matchin threw in the three white jerseys. Adewego is right in the middle of it. Akers was trying to get around to get in that void right in the middle, and you can see number 11, Norton, chasing down the, the wide receiver in the middle, the slot receiver that was trying to get into that void in that two-deep zone. The middle linebacker, Jared Norton, did a nice job of getting deep and getting right underneath him. And if you're wondering why they did not kick the yeah. field goal, remember, it had been about a 40, probably eight yard field goal into a very stiff win, which amounted to probably more like about 58 yard field goal. And their long is 46. 
So now Colt McCoy takes over with 43 seconds left. They got a couple of timeouts. They're going with the win. And they run the little screen. Charles. Picks up maybe five on the play. Clock continues to run. Pavelic, eight tackles in the opening half. Texas took a 3-0 lead. Baylor came back, made it 7-3. Texas answered the call. We're at 10-7. We've got a timeout. Complete. Over the 45, close to the 50-yard line. First down for Texas, and Finley on the reception. His fourth catch of the afternoon. When Finley's matched up on a linebacker, in that case, it was number 44, Nick Moore. That's just flat unfair. Yeah. Finley runs immediately away from him, and he's big enough to take the initial collision and then create separation. Plenty of time, 22 seconds left. Baylor rushes for McCoy, flushed. Looks complete to Cosby. Coming up at halftime, we'll take a look at our Nissan Heisman watch. That'll be coming up in just a little bit. Pickup of eight on the play for Quan Cosby. The junior who's got a lot of relatives here. Mark Texas not too far away, the former prep quarterback. Tried a little Major League Baseball at first. 14 seconds left to play in the half. Colt McCoy has one timeout left, and obviously in college football, the clock stops with the first down as well. Plenty of time to get something done here. Looks at Cosby, then looks over the middle. Pass complete. Obaniah got the first down. He scampers out of bounds inside the 30 at the 29-yard line. Chris Obaniah. With seven seconds left in one timeout, you still have time if you want to get slightly greedy and throw the one more time into the end zone. Remember Texas, and they're not going to do it. The no. Google team is coming in. The wind at Texas's back is a much different situation, obviously, than Baylor just faced going the other direction. Let's see if maybe they pull out a little bag of trick. Maybe not. Field goal is going to be attempted by Ryan Bailey. He has one today. They spot it at the 36-yard line, a 46-yard attempt. Balls down. Kick. No. Wide to the right. With two seconds left. You know, Ron, with the timeout left, uh, there was a time to run a play there. Yeah, it would have to have been quick. You know, and you can throw it into the end zone, and you have a, a veteran guy, and Colt McCoy's making great decisions. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and let him take a shot into the end zone. If something's there, great. If not, you could have done that right there. 10-7, to 7, Texas has the lead. Now, if you're Baylor and your guy Morris, been a lot of struggles, as we've already documented here. You've got to be feeling pretty good about oh. your football team, the way they're competing. No kidding. Kneel on this, go in and have a cold drink of water at halftime and feel good about yourself. Only 161 yards offense for Baylor, but their defense, even though giving up 283, have only given up 10 points to the Longhorns. And they will take the knee. Halftime, the score is right. Those of you just tuning in, the Texas Longhorns only with a three-point advantage over the... Give me your evaluation of the first half here so far. Well, I'll give Baylor credit because they're playing really hard and they're playing with a lot of confidence. And what we've done is move the ball really well and hadn't put it in the end zone. So why not, Mac, and how do you slow this team down on the other side? Because they've got to believe now just down three at the half. Well, they do, but we believe too. Right. And we're going to come back and play great the second half. The only thing we've got to do is take care of the ball. We've, we've, moved it. we've had two turnovers. Uh, everything else has been good. You have one going in, cost us three, uh, seven points going in, gave them seven going the other way with a turnover, cost us in an interception down here. Uh, we could well be up 28 to nothing if, if we had taken care of the ball. Ball security on the road is really important. Baylor has lost 10 straight to ranked opponents. Their last win came back in 2004 versus Texas A&M, and right now they trail nationally ranked Texas Longhorns 10-7, trying to snap a nine-game losing skid to the Longhorns. They'll get the ball first. McElroy, Geddes. Wind continues to blow as we see. Hunter Lawrence having a little problem with it. Wind blowing from right to left. He'll be kicking with the wind. Baylor trying to snap. Three game losing streak. Gettis looking up in the sun. McElroy says, just sit down. Baylor will take over first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. 
One of the problems Baylor offense has had is they've shot themselves in the foot this year. With that in mind, this first possession of the second half put it in a scope of importance for us. Well, the first thing they have to eliminate what you just said. They cannot come out and, and throw an interception, some type of turnover that gives Texas the short field and starts this second half quickly for Texas. I think on the other hand, ideally, Baylor needs to drive the football a little bit. Football games are won by generally playing two strong halves, and Baylor has to prove they can have half number two right here. Michael Matchett, still a quarterback, already graduated, taking graduate classes. The pitch to the outside, nothing doing. Great job, Brandon Foster, the senior out of Arlington, Texas, tripping up Jay Finley. Brandon Whitaker is not in the lineup still. In case you just joined us, he got hurt in the second quarter, spent most of the time on the bench. Loss of four on the play. So Finley is getting all the reps at tailback. They thought we'd see Whitaker again. He's their leading receiver and leading rusher, and that hurts his Baylor offense because he's such a weapon. In that F position, that running back position in this spread option offense is vital. It really sets the table for everything they want to do. Texas moving around on defense. Matchin sees the blitz coming from his backside. Geddes cannot hold on to the ball. He's dropped a couple already today. Let's take a look at the first half numbers. What jumps out at you, Kelly? Well, Texas did really everything that they wanted to do. Total yards, 283 to 161. The first downs, it's the turnovers right here that has allowed Baylor to have a little hope. The time of possession isn't that big of a deal because Texas didn't use the time wisely and get the ball in the end zone. Two plays here in the second half, minus four yards. Third and 14, three wide receivers right. has to throw it wisely into the ground intended for Finley, but Lamar Houston is the one who disrupted that play at the point of attack, and Baylor will have to kick it. Yeah, and that was going to be a third down and long yardage screen pass with Lee Hayes doing the safe thing, but Dwayne Aquino was having none of it. Lee Hayes called some nice plays in the first half and really was a step ahead a couple of times, not on that play. Now kicking into the win, Everson. Five spiraling kick. Their catch is being called for. Nice job by Quan Cosby just trying to make that catch. This first half, now it's even. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, they are down by three, and so they're just hoping that they can stay in this thing. Cole McCoy's pass almost knocked away. Pass was intended for Nate Jones. Falls incomplete. Once again, going with the wind. Going with the wind, and Colt McCoy is trying to take advantage of it by going downfield to Nate Jones in the middle. Remember, Nate Jones's touchdown in the first half, down in the first half, in the back of the end zone was the same kind of thing. Forced the middle of the field with Baylor's defense playing a lot of cover two or man to man, and Colton McCoy is trying to exploit it down the middle. Brings up second down and 10. Ball at the Baylor 49 yard line. McCoy into the flat. Pass is caught. Wrapping him up immediately was Josh Bell. Juan Cosby on the reception. Cosby's got five catches already this afternoon. There Ten is. versus Central Florida earlier this year. Yeah, and he's one of those guys that the wide receiver position that Colt McCoy's like likes to spread the ball around. Now that Lima Sweet is out, Colt McCoy seems more willing to spread the ball around. Third down, we'll call it five. Boy, looks left, pass, first down to Jordan Shipley inside the 40, down to the 35-yard line. Weidman on the coverage, but he had a little zip on that. Watching Colt last year and this year, he's getting rid of the ball a lot quicker, I think, this yeah, season. Yeah, quicker because the decisions are coming quicker, and this is a good example. Shipley sets down in the zone, and that's where you have to throw the ball quickly through the tight window, the quick decision and a hard throw. Pick up of nine on the play. Charles is going to be jammed up right at the line of scrimmage. No game. You know, we talk about Colt McCoy and the, and the outstanding season he had last year. Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, said, you know, after the Alamo Bowl, basically he talked to him and said, listen, the expectations are going to be astronomical oh, yeah. your sophomore year. He sort of warned him what was coming this season. Yeah, what was interesting, too, is Coach Davis also talked about 
they they didn't really take that advice to themselves and they put a lot more on this young man's plate and they've kind of backed off and he's playing much freer in the last couple of weeks. Baylor shows blitz. Here they come and McCoy is going to be dropped. Back at the 46 yard line by Leon Freeman. His first sack of the afternoon and the first for the Baylor Bear defense. Leon Freeman and Jeff Nelson both getting nice pass rushes, and this is the most improved area on Baylor's defense, is the ability to get pressure up front, whether it's four. In that case, it was bringing a couple extra guys up front, but nonetheless, Colt McCoy goes down. Third and 21, the 18th sack of the year. They had only 11 last year for Baylor. Again, they show blitz. This time, they only rush two and a half. McCoy over the middle, picked off by Pavelic. Second interception by Colt McCoy today. Pavelic over the 40 to the 42-yard line. And McCoy makes the tackle. Ron, if there's one thing that can keep an underdog in a game, it's turnovers. And that's what right now Texas is doing. Colt McCoy trying to force the ball down the field. And you can see Pavelic, number 41. He's that middle linebacker that has to protect the back end in that two deep zone, and Colt McCoy just stares it down from the beginning. Pavelic is just reading the quarterback and continuing to get depth, and the ball comes right to him. Second interception for Joe Pavelic in his career. Now Baylor takes over on their own 42 yard line, trailing 10 7. Matches the quick pass caught by Akers. He has been the main weapon as far as the pass and catch this afternoon. Muckleroy on the coverage. And Ron, Texas was bringing pressure once again, and what Texas is doing is they're overloading one side, and they're creating mismatches. They're actually one-on-ones, and you can see the ball. Matchett didn't even really have time to put his fingers on the laces. Sometimes you have to do that in that blitz control, and he found Akers very quickly. Talked about how that Lee Hayes says, I don't mind dinking and dunking him. Texas rushes three, Matchett's got the time in the flat, that's incomplete, Philly takes a wallop, and we have a penalty flag thrown, and the Texas coaches are not happy. Sergio Kendall had the hit on the play. I don't know if that should be a personal foul, because that was kind of a bang-bang. What do you think, quarterback? I don't know, it, it seems to me that We'll listen to the call first. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number two. 15 yard penalty for the previous spot, automatic first down. And then the thing that officials are always going to do is err on the side of protecting the player. And right now, they just feel that, oh, absolutely, I totally agree with it. Watch it real time. That was slow motion, real time right here. Opportunity to take about three steps, and then that's when Sergio Kendall comes up and delivers the blow. Great call on the field. They had two personal fouls from Killebrew last week. Now they get one from Sergio Kendall this afternoon. Fresh set of downs into the flat. Finley having trouble holding on to the football. And again, Sergio Kindle's on the coverage, and he may have been hearing footsteps on that one. Yeah, but that ball was low and behind a running back, and if there's any receiver on the field or potential receiver that needs an accurate pass, it's running backs and tight ends. They don't have the same eye coordination, generally, or body control that your wide receivers do, and Finley can't adjust on that bad throw by Matchin. And Matchin looked over to Guy Morris, and Guy Morris just signaled a timeout. Play clock was going down, but Matchin just wasn't sure what he was seeing. Second down and 10 for the Baylor Bears, trailing the Longhorns by just three. 11.04 to play in quarter number three. Baylor with the ball on the Texas 36-yard line. Here comes the blitz again. Matchin scrambling as a man open. Incomplete at Fenny's hands. Threw it a little bit behind him, but that was a catchable ball. Ocam was putting the pressure on Matchin. Matchin does a nice job by avoiding the pressure initially running to his left. Good job keeping his head down the field, and you're right, that should have been caught. Justin Vinte should have been able to bring that ball in, but also Matchin understanding where he is on the field 
getting close to the red zone, and then a second down play. His team needed positive yards. He had yards with his feet if he would have want, wanted to run with it. Four drops this afternoon for the Baylor Bears. Third and ten. Match it. A little shuttle pass. Nothing doing. Sam Acho is right there, the freshman out of Dallas, Texas, again. Finley, no place to go. The famous Utah pass. Acho doing, Lee Gross Cup came up with it. <laughs> Acho doing a nice job. And also Jared Norton, number 11, that middle linebacker. Because Bobino, remember, got hurt early That's in the right. game. And I don't know that we've seen him back since. But the middle linebacker is the player on that shuttle pass inside. He has to be there, stay home, and blow it up. Epperson kicking into a strong win. Pavelic the up back. Good snap. Going to try to pop this up. It's hanging in the air. He got a shot at it. Nice job by Baylor, and he'll down it inside the 10 yard line. They got the benefit of a pretty good bounce. Only a 26 yard for trying to snap a seven game losing streak in Big 12 play. They trail by only three now. And you, know, you talk about Texas and their wide receivers, Lima Sweet not playing, but he's distributing the ball well. And I think Colt McCoy is more willing to distribute the ball with Lima Sweet out. Lima Sweet really represented that big go-to receiver. They don't really have that in these guys. These, mm -hmm. are, these guys really are interchangeable, which is a good thing, because Colt right. McCoy is advanced enough to take full advantage of it. Well, the ball's on the nine-yard line. Texas first and 10. They'll try the run game. This is Vondrell McGee. Gets up over the 15 to the 18-yard line, about a yard short of the first down. Best game this year for this young redshirt freshman out of Longview, Rice. At 80 yards on eight carries, had an outstanding high school career, rushed for over 3,400 yards and 44 touchdowns his last two seasons. Learning the college game, though. Second down and short. Got the first ball's loose. It's loose. We've got to stack up. We're not sure. Wait for the officials. Texas say they've got they've got it back. Boy, they dodged the bullet there. It looks like Charlie Tanner may have come up with the ball. The backup left guard. That ball was bouncing around again, Kelly. Yeah, and that's a hustle play by Charlie Tanner. And once again, Vondrell McGee in the game carrying the football. The young redshirt freshman only had 24 carries coming into today, and that's the second or that was a potential mishap. Remember, he was the running back in on that red zone play yeah. where McCoy pitched it and it ended up a turnover. So I wonder why Jamal Charles is not the guy that's the workhorse today. Well, Jordan Lake had a shot at it. This time a little reverse to Shipley. McCoy tries to come up with a block. Can't do it. Shipley corralled at the 25-yard line. But Cole McCoy was leading the play and trying to throw a block. Josh Bell coming up to make the stop. A little razzle, not much dazzle. No, and there's not much dazzle when your play calls for your quarterback being your lead blocker. I'll tell you that right now. But Baylor is very good at reacting defensively to plays like that. They're fast in the secondary in the linebacker position, active up front. That play hasn't worked that much on them this entire season. That's Chris Obanaya. Behind McCoy, second down and eight. Little fake, looking left. Scrambling. McCoy's got the first down, and we'll have a penalty flag also on the play. I think it was against Texas, a little push in the back there. Yeah, I think Peter Allman, the tight end out there, trying to give his quarterback the soft edge, might be the guilty party. Very timely penalty if you're a Bear Baylor fan. Exactly. Illegal block in the back. It's the offense, number 86. It's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still second down. You called it, partner. Yeah, just working hard out on the edge. And you know your quarterback is breaking contain, and you just become a potential receiver, and now you're a blocker. But what a timely penalty if you're Baylor. Because right now, Baylor needs a whole lot of things to go in their favor because their offense 
They've had the advantage of three takeaways today by their defense, but they've only gotten in the end zone for seven points. And I don't right. know that that's enough on the afternoon today. This Texas offense can explode at any moment, but Guy Morris, 10 and three. Here at Baylor, when opponents score less than 20. Second down and 13 now. McCoy, a little draw. Baylor doing a nice job defensively again. Brandon Stiggers, who has an interception, a fumble recovery. He teams up with Dominique Chris, a coach's kid, to make the stop. Nice job, though, just reacting to that play, Kelly. And Larry Holford told us yesterday that he likes his guys. He, he believes his defense can compete. Mm -hmm. Now, they've been competing a lot on the year uphill, meaning that their offense really hasn't been all that effective. So the defense has been out there running out of gas. But these guys have played very well today. This is really no surprise. Third down and 12. Both Texas and Baylor fans are now making some noise. Baylor brings the blitz, and we have a penalty flag, which is good because Pavelic was in the middle of it. On the end, offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. Third down and 17 now with 7.57, and then Baylor will have the win. And what Baylor has to decide right here, third and 17 generally is a throwaway down for for an offense. You'll see a draw or a quick screen of some sort. Get as much as you can. Give your punter a little more room. Baylor cannot give up something cheap to Texas on this block. They've got to get to the 34-yard line for the first down. Baylor rushes three. McCoy's got time. It'll be short of the first down. The pass is complete. Jordan Shipley on the reception, but he'll be a couple of yards short. That brings up a fourth down, and the offense is heading off the field, and the punt team's coming on. Yeah, really nothing to think about. And Josh Bell, the corner on that play, covering Shipley, did a nice job of knowing where the first down marker was. And when Shipley got in the neighborhood, he closed the gap down just a little bit and forced the throw underneath. They kick it away again. Justin Moore out of Jersey Village High School in Houston, Texas. And it's a fake. And they've got the first down. Bobino is the one who had the football, and he just took it straight ahead. Rashad Bobino, the linebacker out of Lamar, Texas. The linebacker that we thought was banged up today, and we haven't seen him much. But Matt Brown, I think, knows that his his team as a whole needs a little shot of energy. But the watch what Justin Moore does. Yeah, yeah, he sells it. You know, that's another thing those kickers and punters, they have a chance to work on. They can go there and do a little acting, and that's where it shows up. That's a good job. Matt Brown knows that his team needs, a, needs an injection of energy in, in the arm. And now Colt McCoy, the out pass is caught. Nate Jones on the reception. And they told us that they thought they may have to do this to try to get these guys a little excited. Fourth reception, by the way, for Jones. That covered 14. And it, you know, the, the head coach is, is somewhat like a jockey riding a fast horse, and sometimes you have to go to the whip, and that's the whip right there. You try to get, get your offense off the canvas and get their attention a little bit, and really his entire team at this point. New set of downs. They are in Baylor territory, leading by just three. McCoy has some running room. Still on his feet. Has the first down as he takes a nose dive at the 33-yard line. Just a heads-up play again by Colt McCoy. Jake Lamar trying to wrap him up. And so is Antonio Jones, but watch the heady play by McCoy. Now Jake Lamar right there is the guy who not only missed McCoy, but he also has contained. And so McCoy, after Jake Lamar missed him, is free around the end. Jake Lamar has to come under control and make that play. Taylor just trying to stop some type of run game here, and they're able to do it. Jamal Charles strung out. May have lost a half a yard on the play. 5.32 to play in the third quarter. Jeremy Williams on the stop. Well, McCoy, though, has done it all today. 46 yards rushing the football. He's thrown for 192 yards. Thrown a 
Couple of interceptions, though. Yeah, that's the thing right there. That's those turnovers represent hope for this Baylor team. They haven't been able to do much with it yet, but they're looking for another opportunity. Second down and 11. The fake to Obanaya. Again, McCoy steps up in the pocket, rifles the pass. Popped by Billy Pittman. Inside the 25, down to the 20, another first down. Lake's on the coverage. He has his 10th tackle, but not before Texas gets the first. Puts a lot of pressure on the defense when the quarterback can move just enough to put the defense in a bind. Now those guys in pass coverage have to decide whether they come up to get the quarterback or continue to be disciplined in their pass coverage. And really, whichever decision they make is going to be the wrong one at that right. point. Texas methodical on offense, courtesy of the fake punt. The quick pass. Jones gets down to about the 15-yard line. Pick up a five on the play. Second down in five. Four and a half to play. Texas offensive coordinator Greg Davis understands that the deeper you get into, red, into the red zone, the defense gets a little antsy and they want to create a negative play and get pressure, so he's looking for the quick outlets right now. Pittman and Jones to the left. Obadiah. He is stacked up right at the 15, leans forward to the 14-yard line, bringing up a third down. Obanaya has been moved to the fullback position because they lost a couple of guys at that fullback spot. He's normally a tailback, but this is a guy that's done everything. He was a quarterback, wide receiver, and defensive back in high school. In 2004 here in Texas, he was a wide receiver at tailback. And with open eye in the game, and we've already seen Vondrell McGee to have a lot of carries. Once again, I ask the question, what is wrong with Jamal Charles? He was the workhorse coming into this game. Now Nate Jones and Shipley, left side. Shipley coming over to talk to Colt McCoy. They'll probably burn a timeout. That's what they'll do is the play clock got down to one. So Colt McCoy is going to talk about it. We come back, they'll be facing... 10 to 7 is our score. That was the count at halftime. Texas on the move, courtesy of a fake punt a few moments ago. Bobbito getting the first down. Now they face third and four, 326 to play in the third quarter. Going with the win. McCoy from the shotgun. McCoy's got time, throws it underneath the coverage. Passes caught Nate Jones. Inside the five, down to the three, first and goal, Texas. Very nicely executed by Texas down here. Third and four, there are a lot of things that will work, and Nate Jones is the slot receiver on the far side, comes all the way underneath the coverage because of the protection up front. Colt McCoy had time to find him on the opposite side. Roger Michael Finley, the tight end on the left side, open eye in the backfield. Here's Obadiah, has the daylight touchdown, Chris Obadiah. First rushing touchdown of the year. Only his third career touchdown, it went three yards, but it's given the Longhorns some breathing room. And the misdirection, Obadiah will start one way, but the play is always designed to go this way. You can see Dallas Griffin, 67, the center is out there leading the way, and he didn't even need to hit anybody. Ryan Bailey, 31 of 31 this year. And he stays absolutely perfect. So Chris Obanaya with a touchdown of the Longhorns. That drive was 15 plays, covered 91 yards, over seven minutes long. The highlight of the play, of course, was the fake punt. Nice job selling it. Bobino doing a nice job as the up back, getting the first down. And what was the result of Mac Brown okaying for that play to be called? His offense took advantage of it and had, right. got to pound on that Baylor defense for 15 plays. Dennis and McElroy again back, kicking with the win. Dennis is going to be driven five yards deep, and he'll wisely take the knee. Five-time Emmy winner at Pittsburgh. Ought to be interesting. Yes. No question Pitts about is, that. His radio show is outstanding, and us Pittsburgh guys got to stick together. Yeah. Okay, so. Let's see if Baylor can answer the challenge now. 
On the run. Texas doing a nice job up to the 24-yard line. Jay Finley. Brandon Whitaker is up off the sideline, by the way. Was injured in the second quarter. Lewis has more on his condition. Little pneumonia. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not on the bike in particular. That's a straight drop. It's the deep out, dangerous pass. Geddes tries to go high for it. Incomplete, but Brandon Foster, who's showing some hops. We saw Foster last week against Todd Blythe of Iowa State. Gave up like six or seven inches and still was able to do a nice job covering him. This young man's got some hops. Yeah, Brandon, you can see him using that finger to say, you, you need to quit coming over here. And he's done a nice job on David Geddes most of the day. I would think about going somewhere else if I was Baylor. Third down and five. Second possession of the second half. The first didn't amount to anything. Texas showing blitz again. Here comes Pabano up the middle. They try to read it. Akers has got it at the 27-yard line, short of the first down by two yards. Aduego did a nice job from that strong safety position, number 19. You force the short pass, you break on the ball, and you force a punt. That's exactly the way you're supposed to do it. Well, now again, Baylor forced to kick it into the wind. Epperson has done a nice job. Cosby standing back at the 30. This is kind of a lower kick. Nice spiraling. Cosby steps up, takes it on the run, loses it. And he regains possession at the 36-yard line. You know, we are talking about how the teammates of Colt McCoy... ...doesn't have designed runs. Generally, it's because there's nothing else downfield and he's not forcing the football. He's averaging six yards a carry. Now he's flushed out of the pocket again. Has Shipley over the middle. He finds him. Shipley sidesteps one. Inside the 40, inside the 35. Mark him down at the 33 and a half. Shipley was wide open cutting across the field. Once again, the defense in the secondary, they're in no man's land because your quarterback is breaking the pocket. He gets outside of contain right there. Now, you're the defender. Is he going to run or is he going to throw it? Regardless of what decision you make, Colt McCoy is in the zone right now. His decision is going to make yours bad. And that's exactly what happened on that play. 36 yards on the pass completion. On first and ten, McCoy looking again up top, has a man in the end zone, incomplete pass, a little bit too strong. I think Colt forgot that 15 mile an hour wind yeah. was at his back. The throw came late, the receiver broke open, created some separation late, and that one got up in the wind and ended up about five yards out of bounds. But Colt McCoy has been very efficient. And that wind is, is we talked about it in the first half. If anything, it's stronger right now than it has been all day. You see the scores in the bottom of your screen. Pitt may pull off an upset today. Red State doing well, we'll keep you posted. Oh, McCoy takes a hit as Charles is dropped. Oh my goodness, Cole McCoy, he was absolutely cold cocked in the backfield. Yeah, Jake Lamar, number 12, he's that rover back in that extra defensive back scheme. The quarterback is fair game when you run in the zone option. Oh my. You can always say, well, I thought he had the football. If he's yeah. throwing the football there, and he's already given it up. He can't take a shot. But zone running scheme, the zone read, yeah. he's fair game. Cole needs to check his dentures. Third down and 15, 20 seconds left in the quarter. Stepping up in the pocket, and Cole McCoy is going to be sacked. Back at the 43-yard line, the second sack for Leon Freeman of the afternoon, and the second for the Bear, Baylor Bears. Freeman's going to be Ulatoski inside speed rush, number 49, right at the top of your screen, right there. It was just sheer speed. You fake outside, and then you go right inside. And that's exactly what the doctor ordered if you're a Baylor Bear fan. Leon Freeman spent three years in the Army, six months in Iraq, and he has just sacked Colt McCoy. Longhorns will have for the kick. 
Dickey into the win. It's a wobbly kick. It'll be short. Say, get away from it. And Baylor does, and Texas <laughs> fails to put the ball down. Did you see that thing die when it got up in the air? It was like someone shot that out of the sky. Only four yards officially on that play. Wow. Well, then you, you're taking over for Kevin Weiberg. Uh, it, what are the challenges facing you now, and what are the things you look forward to improving in the Big 12 Conference? Well, I think one thing that we really have to look at, and, and I talked about this in the interview process, is how are we going to brand ourselves um, and, uh, that will relate to the citizens of this part of the country in the heartland? And we've got the world-class institutions that occupy these seven states. So I think we're really going to look towards that. The other things that we need to do, of course, are just continue to do the things that um, make intercollegiate athletics appropriate with higher education. Match it, little play action pass, steps up in the pocket, throws over the middle, pass is complete. Again to Justin Akers, and he has another first down. You know, you look at the Big 12 Conference, and you say, oh, you know, you've got national titles in football, you've got in all the sports, Baylor, of course, in women's basketball. It is one of the premier conferences in the country. It is great, and, you know, I'm just so lucky to be a part of it and uh, grateful to have this opportunity to lead the conference as we go forward. Now Chris Burke, who made that last reception, goes wide to the right, first and 10. Ball on the 49-yard line for the Bears. Matching again from the shotgun. Texas rushes four. Matching looking deep down the right sideline. Going to his speedster. Incomplete. Bass intended for the true freshman, Burke, again. Palmer, step for step on the coverage. And Kelly would have had that. <laughs> yeah, that wind, I think, got a hold of that one again. The quarterbacks are having a hard time throwing deep with the wind at their back. But one question I have is, as the commissioner of the Big 12, how do you handle programs like Baylor that really need to elevate what they're doing, particularly in the football realm? Is there any role that you have in trying to make not necessarily a, a better playing field, but get them elevated to the Texas and the Oklahomas of the conference? Wait for this play. Okay. Matches pass caught by Fenty. Trying to get the first down, and he does. Scampers out of bounds inside the 40. They'll mark it out at the 39. You know, Kelly, that's a difficult uh, thing from the conference office perspective to try to get a hold of. The main thing is, is to have expanded telecasts like we have now with Versus. You know, yeah, now great point. Baylor, Baylor gets a, a additional exposure that um, last year might not have happened, but now with our partnership with your network, it's providing a, a great opportunity for them to be exposed. They're playing a great, tough game here, so a number of recruits are probably yep. very enhanced or, uh, you know, enchanted by this. Yeah. Well, Commissioner, we appreciate you taking time out and being with us today. We've, we've been trying to get with you for the last couple of weeks, but thank you so much for being with us today. Well, it's an honor, and uh, uh, best and again, of luck, we're, just, we're really excited about this partnership with Versus and look forward to a number of games in the future. Well, I hope we can continue it, and uh, I've had a great relationship since the Big 12 Conference started and hope to continue it. You bet. We appreciate your work. All right. Thank you for Commissioner your time. Commissioner Dan Beebe of the Big 12 Conference doing a great job for the thank conference. You. They're going to go ahead and make sure they've got the measurement. He was just short of the first down, which will bring up a third down and maybe an inch. So now Baylor trying to answer the challenge, and the fans don't like it. They thought it was a first down. Guy Morris's squad, though, has put up quite a fight. Even though they've given up over 400 yards of Texas offense, they've done a nice job. They really have, and it, it's interesting. It gets down to the same thing. They have to take advantage of these type of situations right here. Third down. Texas bunching up. Less than a yard. Matching puts his head down and he's got it. You know, Ron, we can talk about a lot of X's and O's and schemes and those type of things, but really we're back to where we started the game. Mm -hmm. Texas didn't take advantage of opportunities in the first half for getting the ball in the end zone. They moved the ball up and down the field, but you don't get points for yards. You have to get it into the end zone or through the uprights. And Baylor didn't take advantage of the turnovers. They have to do something with this drive right here Absolutely. to continue that momentum and give themselves hope to win this game. Two track guys on the left side with White and Geddes. Here comes the blitz. Matchin buys some time, throws it, pass, caught. Thomas White, first down. Inside the 20 down to the 18-yard line. About a 20-yard pickup on the play. It was on the money, though. 
matching, showing just a lot, enough movement. You can see right there, creates a throwing lane, does a nice job of keeping his focus down the field, and then Thomas White slides inside of that zone defender, and the quarterback Matchin finds him. This is a guy, Michael Matchin, who, while at Kent State, threw for 2,000 yards and 11 touchdowns. He's been in games. Up, passes tip, incomplete. And the first thing Thomas White did when he saw it was tipped by Frank Ocam was he turned around to see if he's going to have to play a DB. You're right. He was very heads up on that play because you never know. Once the ball's in the air, obviously the defense thinks they own it. They do those tip drills in practice all the time. So it's a good heads up play by White. But I think Baylor was lucky to have that go to the ground. Very yeah. good recognition by Ocam that time, recognizing that the ball was going over his head on the screen. They call Ocam the nightmare, and he almost caused one for the Baylor offense. Second down and ten. Matson has to dump it out into the flat. Whitaker getting his first playing time in a while. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage, which was about the 18-yard line. Roy Miller from that nose tackle spot, the junior out of Colleen, Texas. He's one of those strong guys on that defensive line for Texas. He was a power lifter in high school. He's one of these guys that benches 500, squats 690, kind of like Loki. Yeah. When you start talking about those type of numbers, yeah, and pounds, you just, just forget about <laughs> it. But the good news for Baylor is Whitaker's back on the field. That F position, the running back position in this high-powered, up-tempo offense is extremely important. Get us alone to the left. Right and Fenny to the right, looking right, into the flat, dropped. Oh my goodness, Justin Fenny had it and couldn't hold on to it. Now he went to the ground, looks like he slipped. This is one of those field turfs where you get those little black things also, you know, on your hands. Ground up tires or rubber, whatever come it is. Come on, come on now. You're trying to help the guy. Come on. Trying to reach out to him. He fell down, he got back up, and the ball was right there. And you're right, sometimes when you lose traction and all those things, you lose focus on the football. And in the mm -hmm. end, Ron, and not about little black things, he dropped the ball. That's right, 35-yarder. Gets down, up and away, and Baylor does get points, and Guy Morris and company just put their arms straight up in the air. Nice job by Caleb Allen, the walk-up. 12-21 to play the ball. Baylor's going to have to kick it away. Now, don't forget, last week they gave up an 88-yard kickoff return for a touchdown against Kansas. But they are kicking with the win. Don Cosby is back inside his own five-yard line. This is going to be Cosby. Hobbles it. They tell him to take a, a knee, and he was about six inches from putting his foot on the end zone line. That was close. The Baylor's defense right now, they need to come out and, and create another big play. Negative yards, whatever it takes to get Texas off the field. Right now, Baylor's offense has a nice, nice taste in their mouth. Get them right back out there and allow them to try it once again. Let's see how much gas is left in the tank of this Baylor defense. They've given up a bunch of yards, as we talked about, 413. But they've done an outstanding job when it really is counted. Now Texas takes over, first and 10, their own 20-yard line. Two tight end situation with Finley and Allman for Texas. Right there to stop Jamal Charles for Baylor defense. Ron, we've talked about, or at least I have, the lack of presence in Charles on the day. He had the majority of the rushing, mm -hmm. the touches in the run game coming into this game, but we haven't seen a whole lot of him. But that two tight end look, and they call it the ace package. One one running back, two tight ends is a is kind of a sign that Greg Davis wants to muscle up a little bit on this Baylor defense and try to run the football. Clyde Cosby, top of your screen, one on one now with the red shirt freshman, Dominic Chris, and he's not getting any help over there. This time, the Baylor defensive line does a nice job dropping Colt McCoy at the 25-yard line. Again, Jason Lamb, his fourth tackle of the afternoon out of Berkeley High School in Richardson. In coverage.
coverage. Baylor really hasn't backed down from Texas all day. Larry Hofer believes that he has some decent matchups in the secondary, so he's not opposed to leaving his corners one-on-one -on -one with this wide receiver bunch from Texas. Third down and five, Texas six of 13 today. Here comes Baylor on a blitz. McCoy reads it into the flat, short of the first down to Jermichael Finley. Nice job by Dwayne Crawford, the rover, coming up to make the stop. It's a great job by Crawford. He's the backside safety. Baylor brings a blitz on the other side, and the outlet is to Finley. The this safety's got to rotate that way, and the outlet's going to be right there. The safety has to get there before Finley can get the first down. Absolutely picture perfect. Bring the blitz from one side and cover the tight end from the opposite side. Justin Moore kicking into that stiff breeze from his own 16-yard line. Chris Burke standing back inside the 40, and this is a dandy. Burke signals the fair catch, backs up inside the 30. 43 yards into the win. Nice job by Moore on the punt. 10-08 to play in a ball game. Can Baylor answer the bell? Let's take a look at the Volkswagen in-game recap, and you can see that Baylor has not been the juggernaut on offense. Only 14 rushing yards, Kelly, but that's not the important number. And have they done enough with the turnovers? But Matchin, on the other hand, has played very well step for step with Colt McCoy. McCoy has two interceptions that were pretty bad interception, interceptions, bad decisions. And right now, Baylor is one big play away from tying this game up. We've got plenty of time. Matchin, straight drop. Look out. Going deep, looking for Geddes. And it's going to be incomplete. And we saw that ball floating on that pass. Lewis Johnson during the break said, guys, you can't talk enough about the wind. It is really yeah, difficult yeah. down here. Lewis, what's it like down there? Can you, can you see that ball floating at times? Absolutely. We saw it happen to Colt McCoy where the ball gets uh, kind of lofted up by that wind. I mean, it is. If you were a pilot trying to land a plane on this field, you'd need a lot of rudder and a lot of aileron <laughs> to sit it down. It is very, very gusty down here. And if you don't keep the ball low, as soon as it gets up, it's going to take, take off on you. Brandon Whitaker back into the ball game for Baylor. Second and ten. Matches pass caught over the 35 to the 36-yard line to Ernest Smith. That's what Matchin and the Baylor wide receivers are doing a much better job of. It's the timing. Mm -hmm. That outlet receiver, which Smith was on that play, that ball has to come out immediately when you recognize it. Matchin's not only getting the ball out quickly, but it's a lot more accurate than it was in the first three quarters of this game. I think he hit it on the head there. We thought that this may, he may see the quick hook today, but he has played steady enough that Guy Morris is going with him the entire game. Third down and just two. Matches pass, picked off, intercepted by Beasley. Looking for some running room, still on his feet, and he's going to be dropped. Back at the 43-yard line, Deion Beasley's second interception of the year. He got his first career interception last week, his second today. And Beasley's actually in the nickel package. He's going to come from inside right here. It's the same play that Baylor ran last time. Same adjustment by the wide receiver, Ernest Smith, but the throw comes late. Actually, the corner, Beasley, was outside, and he jumps inside of him. That ball was late and needed to be outside. Yeah. Exactly what he, he didn't do on the play before. Let's see if Texas has their best starting position of the afternoon, does something big to start off. We just throw it out into the flat. Billy Pittman on the reception. 9.09 to play as he scampers out of bounds. What we saw in that adjustment, Ron, is Ernest Smith is that outlet receiver that has to mm -hmm. set it down against zone, but Beasley did a nice job of reading it. There hasn't been an adjustment. Once the receiver sets down, he needs to be able to also then wheel it back outside, and his quarterback needs to recognize it. Beasley had one too many looks at it and jumped all over. Jamal Charles, right side, gets stood up by Jason Lamb. Lamb now with five tackles on the afternoon. You gotta love a defensive end, Jason Lamb, who's also part of a country and western dance team. And he tried to do the two-step on Jamal Charles' face that time. 
And he's one of those guys for Baylor that has really improved. Lamb and also Vincent Rose, number 91. That front all the way across the board has improved dramatically for Baylor on the season thus far. Derek Loki in for blocking purposes on third down and one. McGee got the first down down to the 30 yard line. How about Derek Loki, 6'2, 290, as the lead fullback in that play? And he didn't just go up in there as window dressing, he went up there and absolutely tattooed some Baylor Bears. I'll tell you what, this. This is one strong guy, Derek Loki. Dad was an All-American linebacker and Stephen F. Austin. They used to work out together, hit the weight room, hit the weights, and finally Derek kind of passed him. His dad said, okay, enough of that. Go work out on your own. Loki recently married, too. Novelic on the tackle, by the way. He's got 11 tackles this afternoon. Fresh set of downs for Texas. Got jumping on the left side of the Longhorn line. I think Peter Allman, number All 86. Start. On the offense, number 86. Five-yard penalty, still first down. That's his second penalty called on him today. Baylor defense jumping around a little bit before the snap, but that's no excuse. If you're on the offensive side, you know the snap count. You go when the ball snap, period. Yeah. Well, that pushes him back. First down, 15 inside of eight minutes to play in the ball game. We've had a good one all afternoon here in Waco, Texas. 10 to 7 was our score at halftime. Texas led by three. McCoy, play action, looking left. Going deep, has a man. Passes caught inside the 10, inside the five yard line by Jamal Charles. What a great throw, though, by Colt McCoy. Covers 31 yards. Charles comes out of the backfield and runs what they call a wheel route. He goes to the flat and then he turns it up. Colt McCoy fakes to one side, comes back, and this is actually the secondary receiver, the running back. Remember, Charles is a speed guy matched up on a linebacker, Nick Moore. That's a mismatch if you're the Baylor Bears. Good job by Colt McCoy. Great throw because there wasn't a very big window to throw that into. Four-time All-American Jamal Charles in track and field. He won the Big 1200 meters as a freshman. Challenging the ruling on the last play. Baylor's going to challenge the ruling thinking that he didn't get his foot in, but the problem is Baylor's bench is on the opposite side. And Guy Morris, that's a tough, a tough look, see, if you're from that far away. It's a tough look, but it's probably not a bad use of his challenge because, you know, if Texas takes this is in either a field goal or a touchdown, it probably closes the door. Does he have possession? The right foot is down, but does he have the possession of the football? We, it's hard to see right there. And actually, the second step, the left step, actually looks like it's in as well. It's going to be hard to overturn. No, I, th I think he may have been bobbling it. Really? That's, that's what they're saying. That's a tough angle to see. If that's if, well, it's like, good to it's good yeah. to say that, but I don't know that they have any yeah. visible evidence at this point in time. Once again, it's got to be absolutely clean evidence. Let's see if he bobbles it here. It's going to be tough to see. He's got it. One foot's down. No, no way. That no. official you saw in the corner yeah, right there catch. is looking absolutely directly at it. You make sure the feet are down. You make sure they have possession. He didn't start to And then you call it. it a catch. He, he didn't, didn't even hesitate. No, he started kind of switching hands there when he went out of bounds. So that, that's pretty clear there. Side judge in perfect position yeah. to see that to see that play right there. So it, it's going to be a hard one to reverse, I believe. There's only been one overturn today. We've had a bunch of them. But you, you go back by to the decision, Guy Morris, to use it here. If, if Texas takes this in the end zone, it's going to be tough sledding. Yeah. You know, you go up by two scores, probably close the door. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It is a catch. First down, Texas. That gets him in an outstanding position. First and goal from the four-yard line for the Longhorns. 7.39 to play. You know, when you talk to Larry Hofer, he said, one of the things we cannot have are those explosive plays, those big plays. We've got to be awake on that. And it came by to it. He had an unlikely source, Jamal Charles, coming up with the big catch. And we haven't seen a whole lot of him on the day, but in this 
crucial situation. You go to the workhorse who has ball security first and foremost. Two tight end situation for the Longhorns. First and goal from the four. Left side, touchdown, Texas, Vondrell McGee. McGee takes it in from four yards out. And now the Longhorns have a little bit of breathing room on the Baylor Bears. But I think when Guy Morris looks back, and obviously there's still a lot of time left, I think it's what you talked about, Kelly, the missed opportunities. Yeah. You know, with a good team like Texas, you have to take advantage of everything they give you, and Baylor really didn't do that with those turnovers. Ron, we, we saw Charles on the big catch taking Texas down. This is a running back making a very difficult catch, getting his feet down, and then the youngster McGee getting his confidence back and taking Texas into the end zone. This ball game. Now that Baylor offense has got to show what Texas Tech is able to do, that is score quickly. As the wind continues to be a problem in the kicking game, but you're right, Baylor has to show something that they really haven't shown much the entire year, and that's been able to come up with a big play that they need desperately right now. To, there's a little window open, but they need to seize yeah. the moment. Well, Hunter Lawrence is going to have to have a little help there yeah. from Mr. Griffin. are set. And it's a, just a grounder. Baylor's not sure what they want to do with it, so but they do get it up to the 32, 33 yard line. Well, our Aarons, a lot of the guys hit coaches now. We'll be announcing the winner next week, of course. Or... Well, let's see what Michael Matching can do, and not much. Goes left-handed on this. Pass is complete to Brandon Whitaker. He switched hands and went with the lefty. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, generally not highly recommended, <laughs> but what the heck at this point? He has to do something to make a play for his team. Creativity at that quarterback position, huh? That's, that's pretty creative. Problem is, he doesn't have a whole lot of time to spend being creative. But all in all, Michael Matchin has done a nice job. Only a gain of a yard on the play. Look at Forgettis. Comes back for the football. Complete. Inside the 50 at the 48-yard line. Pickup of 19 on the play. Matchin actually had pressure and got hit in the hand as he threw this ball, but it worked out well. The underthrow to the fade route is actually a pretty decent play. Beasley was playing over the top and overrunning the fade, throw it behind the receiver. Even if it's unintentional, it works well. You see the numbers on matching. Now the linesman coming in. The football blew away again. <laughs> Gave him an extra yard and a half. Gonna have to get out the duct tape. <laughs> All right, 6.50 to play in the ball game. Ball's on the 48-yard line, first and 10 for Baylor, trying to overcome a 14-point deficit. Whitaker dancing around. Brandon Whitaker down to the 42-yard line. Pickup of six on the play, second and four. Jared Norton coming up to make the stop. I haven't noticed it. Imagine taking his mouthpiece out of that face mask I today. He, I don't think he's, he even knows it's there, to well, be honest with you. Baylor's having to throw the football. It might be highly recommended now. I think Texas is going to get after that's him. A, that's a good call. It's been sitting there, I think, the whole game. We need to stick that thing right in where it belongs. Second and five. Matching's pass too high off the hands of Chris Burke, the true freshman. Just floated a little bit on him, and you can see him go, my bad. Yeah, and that's the timing. It's, this is this the timing and rhythm with a quarterback and receiver. When you're changing quarterbacks, it's hard to get on the same page, and that's that's the near misses right there. Those, those completions will come later on if they can find a quarterback to put out there week after week after week. Third down and five. 
Closing in on six minutes to play in the ball game. Whitaker slips out of the backfield. Going up for Geddes again. Fights for it. Pass interference. Flag is thrown. Deion Beasley, who's got a pick today, and it's going to be against Texas. The same matchup we saw in the underthrow to get us a, a moment ago, and this time the ball hung up there, battling for it. Pass interference on the defense, number seven. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. And if they're battling for the football, typically it's going to be called on the defensive side, which, as an offensive guy, I agree with most of the time. This is a jump ball. But Beasley was a little late turning back to find the ball, and he got his hands on the receiver as he started to turn back, and that's enough in that situation to call the pass interference. Now Beasley giving up six inches to get us. You can see the penalty, seven for Texas, only two on Baylor this year, or tonight, I should say. A lot less than what they usually average. 6 6 to play. First and 10. Ball on the 27-yard line. Baylor continues to fight. Matson gets away. Throws, pass. Intercepted by Griffin. 30, 40. He may take it to the house. Say goodbye to Marcus Griffin. Interception of the year. This one, 91 yards for a touchdown. Versus brother now in the NFL, Michael Griffin. I think he probably just knocked over the popcorn on that one. Michael Matchett generally on the day has made great decisions, but throwing the ball late over the middle almost always is a bad decision from the quarterback position. Your team needs a play. There's room to run. Matching could have. Got some yards with his feet, but that one sailed on him. Got some good quarterback pressure, too, from the freshman Sam Acho. And the extra point is perfect. Marcus Griffin, the senior out of Bowie High School in Austin, Texas. Coaches say he comes to work every day. After the pressure, he gets the pick, and he takes it 91 yards. Texas by 21. Marcus Griffin with the touchdown after the interception. That has given the Longhorns the 31-10 lead over the Baylor Bears. Michael Matchin, unfortunately, with his second interception of the afternoon. Third of the season, and as Kelly mentioned, for the most part, he's made nice decisions. Yeah, not a lot of yards to go with all the completions that he's had, but by and large, he's had a pretty decent day. A little miss here and there and that's all it takes to kill drives and if you're Baylor and you're Baylor's offense that's struggling you're not on the same page with your wide receivers you can't string together that 8 10 12 play drive right. to get it in the end zone and it's, he's also been hurt by five drops by his wide receivers on catchable balls that Leroy he takes a shot as he gets up over the 30 yard line to the 33 yard line you know, you look at Texas history, not only in football, but in other sports as well. You see a lot of great names, and one of the greatest in baseball, the Rocket, Roger Clemens, and our Lewis Johnson is with him now. All right, Ron, and he's retired again after 24 <laughs> years of pitching in the big leagues. You just finished up your deal with the Yankees. But before we talk baseball, let's talk about what brought you here, and it has something to do with your oldest son, Kobe, who's now pitching, but has a connection to some players here. Yeah, my oldest son, Kobe, played football memorial with Will Harvey, who's the long snapper here for Texas, and Jordan Lake uh, was teammates with Kobe in football and baseball at Memorial High School. William played there. William Harvey played there also, so a little family reunion for the boys. I think we're all going to get a bite to eat after. Now, as play continues on the field, I'm looking at you, Roger, and I'm thinking, there's no way you're retired. You look like you're in great shape. I can't see you sitting down for long. What do you hope to do? What's next for you? Well, you know, I'm just sitting back, and, um, you know, when I finally do retire, whenever that might be, I'm just going to step away. I've, I've tried to retire 
the last three years and I'm failing at it miserably. Right. And uh, you know, I, you know, I love I love the guys when the guys call me. And this past year was a different situation because all the injuries the Yankee pitchers had. Right. And uh, Joe called me and the other guys on the team gave me a shout. So I tried to get my body going and, and get out there and help them. What about Joe Torre, his departure from the Yankees, and the way he left? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm going to miss him, and um, I know the city of New York is going to miss him. He was, um, you know, he was definitely the, one of the main reasons I got up off my couch to go back to work again and right. uh, to try and uh, bring some joy to his eyes. But uh, he's brought me plenty of joy over the years, and um, if he wants to work again, I'm sure he will. He knows what he's doing. He handles the uh, ball club extremely well, hand handles the media extremely well in New York also. So uh, we're going to miss him. Now you have a younger son now that's pitching in the big leagues. What's that like now to watch Kobe? Well, Kobe plays third base. He pitched uh, in third, high third base, that's right. Yeah. He, he, uh, he pitched in high school, but uh, he likes to hit. And uh, it's been a great offseason for him. He's, um, you know, he's working hard. You know, he wants to uh, push the envelope. He's with the Houston Astros. And, you know, I love it uh, that hopefully he'll move up and get a chance to see him here in the state soon. All right, last quick one. Uh, Red Sox or Cleveland, who do you have tonight? Well, the momentum swings back to the Red Sox, I believe. Getting right. back in Fenway Park, it's a huge advantage. Roger, thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you. Good, Good to see you. you. All right, one of the great ones barely gets the first out as they go to a new quarterback. John David Weed has checked in. The junior college transfer out of Cypress Creek High School and Tyler Junior College. You know, we saw Weed yesterday. We walked out to practice, and the coaches had warned us. They said, wait do you see the size of this guy. He looks like a tight end. When did they start growing quarterbacks like that? 6'5", 225, and he's chiseled. I mean, he oh, has yeah. almost no body fat, somewhat like myself, right? I mean, isn't that the comparison? <laughs> You're about that you size. Yeah. yeah, exactly. He's a big guy, and they really like him. They say he's got a good arm, and he's, he's probably the, one of the better athletes on the team. Now he's got to use that athleticism. Picks up a couple, takes a hit as he gets up to the 50-yard line. That's where they'll mark him out. Pick up a three on the play. Ryan Palmer, four tackles this afternoon. Ron, right now, Baylor is all about trying to find the quarterback that can get them kind of the, to that next level with this Texas Tech-style offense. And, you know, whether it's Weed or whether it's Matchin, at this point in time, it's hard to tell. But what they need is a cons consistency at the position. Mm -hmm. Decide on a guy. Let him play and let his receivers get on the same page. Second down and six. Weeds pass again. How about the sixth drop? And Fenty has had a couple of them himself. He said at least three or four. Yeah, I think that's at least the third for Fente. And, and remember when we saw these guys, the Baylor Bears at Texas A&M, there was a lot of drop balls then. Ten. So it's, it's not the quarterbacks, you know. The quarterbacks are doing a lot of nice things. But in this offense, you have to take advantage of every opportunity. There's the man that started the season as the starting quarterback, Blake Smansky, sophomore from Wichita Falls. They thought he had a, uh, basically a, a concussion last week. Took the CAT scan and it came out clean, so he was okay. His shoulder's a little stiff. Weed is hit as he throws it, caught by Thomas White. Stretches forward on third down and maybe he picked up two on the play. Drew Kelson, who's back at his normal position at free safety, was a linebacker last year, makes the stop. The way that Lee Hayes described this offense is it's really a system. It's mm -hmm. an offensive system, and a lot of their routes are very good against zone or man because it, it necessitates the quarterback and receivers reading as the defense unfolds. That's why it's so intricate, and that's why you need timing. That's why you need the same quarterback out there week after week. Fourth down, they need four. Caught, first down, Baylor. Justin Akers, he's done a nice job today. That's the decisiveness that you need at that quarterback position. John David Weed does a nice job of just getting back, getting rid of the football, and Akers is that guy who has a good feel inside. You know, he's a big body, kind of borderline tight end. Does a nice job of getting into the softness of the zone from that slot position. And the drive stays alive, but we are inside of three minutes. 21 points down. This pass is going nowhere. That's called complete mistiming there. Ryan Palmer right with Justin Akers and was probably the closest to the ball. Well, let's take a look at Texas's remainder. Uh, and a and of course, beat them last year. So the road doesn't get any easier. Throw underneath, hopping over the coverage. Nice job again by Akers. 
He's got seven receptions in this ball game. We saw that schedule with Texas and you know Nebraska in next week in AM to end the year. There that those programs are are struggling. They're taking on water big time. But in between Oklahoma State and Texas Tech, those are no mm. gimmies. No. And Texas really has to win out and they have to get a lot of help because Texas or uh, Oklahoma has to lose a couple more. Whitaker slashes inside the 30, down to the 26 yard line. Pick up of eight on the play. Well, Ron, one thing that uh, Mac Brown told us during the week is you have to be consistently good before you can be great. Right. Was this a consistently good performance today or was it average? I think it was a consistently good performance on defense, especially because they've held Baylor to 284 yards so far coming into this drive. Pass complete again to Akers. That's a new career high of eighth reception. But I think defensively, they've done a nice job. And you, you know, you like like Mac Brown was telling us at halftime. You take away that fumble. Yeah. You know, I mean, they, they were they were about to score. And who knows what have happened there? But I think defensively they did a nice job today. Texas. Yeah, I would agree with that. And offensively, it's just a little misstep here and there. You can see them on the verge of really erupting offensively because Colt McCoy is ready. I think the people around him need to take one more step forward, and this is going to be a nice offense as the snaps goes well go. over the head. Let's fall on it, young man, and he finally does. You know, it's funny because when, when Texas lost too, when they lost to Kansas State, of course, and you know, they, they really didn't do a bad job defensively in that ball game. They held Kansas State to about 272. They gave up 14 points on special teams, seven on an interception return. But everybody was saying how bad Texas is. And you know, we asked Mac about it earlier this week, and he said, listen, we're not as bad as people think we are. We we still got a good shot at this at the at this season. Well, Pitt upset Cincinnati. Penn State squeaks by Indiana. Colt McCoy looking at uh, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma struggled with Iowa State today, only winning by 10. And how about Vandy upset South Carolina? The old ball coaches shedding some tears tonight. And Alabama whacking Phil Fulmer. Well, that could be called the buyout bowl, I guess, as some are tabbing it. Yeah, two proud programs in yeah. Nebraska and Texas A&M really struggling right now to kind of find their footing. Third down and 34, final 54 seconds. But what you were talking about with Mac Brown, you know, that as opposed to what we see out of Guy Morris, he has a uphill battle here. I, recruits come in here and I guarantee they don't see the same things that they see at other places in the Big 12. You know, Baylor administration-wise has to decide whether they're committed to competing in the Big 12 conference in football. I agree. I mean, the bottom line is you can say whatever you want about it, but it's an arms race. They've got a nice baseball field. The Ferrell Center's nice, nice softball field. But the Baylor administration needs to make a commitment. I mean, this is the fourth coach during Big 12 to coach for Baylor, and the results have been the same, and you have to look at the constant there. What is it? Yeah, Baylor. Baylor's the constant there. The administration the, is the constant there, and, and that's what it takes to compete. You know, this football programs at the major college level are the cash cows that really support everything else. And so it's wise to put a commitment behind this Baylor football program. We going up top on fourth down, and it's going to be picked off in the end zone. Looks like Brandon, is it Brandon Foster or Marcus Griffin? I think Marcus Griffin has his second. I think he may have. He jumped up and got the yeah. ball at the highest point, and no one from Baylor really seemed willing to do that. But Matt Brown also, he, he understands that, you know, coming into this year, he had a young offensive line replacing three guys up front that really set a physical tone for this offense as a whole. Colt McCoy was coming in into his sophomore year, and then they liked their receivers, but they were inexperienced, and he knew that it was going to take time to, to have the inexperienced guys merge right. with the experienced guys, and they're on the verge of doing that as they go forward this season. Well, Mac Brown gets his second win in a row, second Big 12 victory. They win it 31 to 10, the final over the Baylor Bears, who put up a valiant fight for most of the ballgame. We'll be back to wrap things up in Waco right after this. Stay with us.